Okay, warm welcome to everyone. Um, oh, Coach Tan is here already. Okay, welcome to all the partners as well. So we'll be starting first with the presentation by the yellow team. So yellow team, you are given 20 minutes to present, after which we will have the Q&A session. All right, so yellow team, whenever you're ready, you may proceed. Uh, okay, uh, is everybody able to hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, good morning. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, we are from the yellow team. Uh, today we will be presenting on our uh, program evaluation basically for the Kindred Spirit uh, Challenge. And we will be covering for the kids, uh, which is the juniors and the opens category. And so this is our content page of what uh, individually we will be actually presenting. Uh, next. Next. Okay. So uh, the aim of this challenge, right, is actually to, there's two main things. One is actually the psychological uh, part of it. So it's where the challenge is meant to actually improve people's psychological state, especially during the COVID period, right? And secondly, of course, um, it's a fitness challenge regardless. So definitely, it's improved our overall fitness level while the people are actually at home, like during COVID. So it's a way to like uh, improve your fitness while you're at home because during um, while you're at home, right, you're generally going to be more inactive. And the motivation wouldn't actually really be there because it's your own house it's your own comfort zone right so it's a way to improve uh it, it's a way to motivate people to get started working out even at home next okay so who are the target audience for this right um so we have two categories so the kids one was actually uh between ages of five and eleven and the aim for them right uh the goals were actually to improve their motor skill and their flexibility well, for the open, um, the ages were between 18 and 54, and it's actually uh, to improve their agility, their balance, coordination even, and overall fitness level, right? And I would like to also uh, mention here that this challenge is not just for, it wasn't just targeted like overall general population, but it was more inclined towards people who are already kind of working out, right? Uh, next. Okay. So I'll go through the operational process flow. So um, it's how the entire team right actually started from the scratch until towards the end, right? So I try to summarize it. So the first few things they have to do actually is um is confirming of the challenges of what are they actually gonna like what challenges is it gonna be in the preliminary rounds and the finals and all this kind of stuff. So it's a list of all the challenges, um, and then. Once they are done with that, they need to create a website, they need to create a social media platform for people to uh, submit their videos. It's a way for them to like so-called uh, get themselves known for the event. And then following is actually getting volunteers, uh, competitors to submit videos. Uh, they had to also recruit judges to review the, those videos. And then once uh, the competitors right, actually submitted the videos, the judges will go through it, they will review the videos, and then they will actually pick the finalists, which is normally uh, about top five, top six people from each category, right? And then they, the group also had to like uh, prepare the event flow of the finals on, from the start like um, of the event, which was I think the other time was 6 p.m. if I'm not wrong, until the end of the program, like how, what is going to be the flow, how are they going to go about it and everything. Um, not only that, they, there was also online training for the competitors to actually um, improve strength and conditioning, which is uh, done by like, um, the professionals, like coaches, uh, trainers and everything. And towards the end of it, they also have to um, train the admins and the judges on what do they have to look out for. Like the admin-wise, on the finals day, right, what is the admin supposed to do um, at every point of time and what goes on, right? And then obviously uh, there was a rehearsal for the finals and then followed by the big day, which was uh, the finals day, right? Uh, next. Okay, so the preliminary round, right? Um, so there was one component of it is actually the online classes, right? Uh, to improve the strength agility conditioning wise. There was the virtual challenge where they actually uh, had to submit a video. So everyone who actually wanted to participate in this, they have to submit a video and basically the 
um, requirement, right, is there's like a cross, right? And then um, they are in the middle. As they jump forward or back or even to the sides, left and right, right, they have to do, uh, upon the jump, right, the moment they land, they have to do this um, leg, so-called a leg race like that, right, where it's called a tula uh, dana sana, right? Um, so the criteria for it is actually the moment you jump and then you land, right, your back leg is uh, going to be straightened. Your torso has to be parallel to the ground and also you, upon landing, you have to maintain that pose for a good three seconds. So those were the requirements of the movement. Uh, next. Uh, okay, so um, for the finals, there was two main uh, component of it. Is actually the endurance and the agility. So the endurance wise, uh, there was uh, they had three exercises, which is they have to do it each of it for thirty seconds. You sit up, push up, squats. While for the agility, is your quadrant jump test where there's a cross again, and then you just go uh jump from box to box for fifteen seconds on clockwise and anti clockwise. Next, okay. So the needs assessment, right? Uh, why was this actually important? Why did they come up with it, right? Um, during COVID period, I would say it's a very stressful period for everybody, and It increases stress for everybody, like in terms of their job security, their financial uh, stress, like people who actually on a daily basis, they go out and everything, and then like everything kind of gets, um, uh, I wouldn't call it problematic, but everything becomes like a strain at the point, and everybody is going through a lot of anxiety and stress at this period of time. So definitely like by trying to motivate people to work out, it kind of helps them to give them an avenue to like so-called get rid of the stress they are going through at the point. And also, it will also, uh, promote their fitness level while they are at home as well because they're going to be very inactive, right? Uh, yeah, next. Yeah, so I'll pass this uh, to Cindy next. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Cindy and I'll be sharing the program administrative, uh, legislative dimensions, analysis of the logistics, manpower, and funding of uh, return of uh, investment. So for the program administrative, these are some of the things that we have to think about. First, we need to prepare the budget, timeline, and milestones. That will include deciding on the dates of submission and the events, and also deciding on the rubrics and the, the exercises to do. So next, we also need to this, uh, prepare the contracts for Club Zoom, sponsors, and hosts. After this initial planning, we will have to start garnering for sponsorships. So digital marketers uh, such as uh, getting online uh, influencers, coaches, athletes to help spread the word and the content, that will be very helpful uh, to uh, boost up the event. And of course, next we need to uh, assess the online platforms uh, that we could use to host this event. And in this case, uh, Zoom was chosen. Okay, so uh, next we also have to look at drawing up the guidelines and also contest details. Getting people to participate through creating the challenges on the official website, sent to RRP students and also prospective uh, competitors internationally and also other athletes in Singapore eligible based on the criteria that was drawn up. So as part of the program administrative, we have to make sure that the timelines are followed, which means that there is a lot of reminders such as informing shortlisted uh, videos and uh, gathering them to join uh, on the 1st August. And next, we have to prepare evaluation form such as the quiz, uh, surveys, questionnaire, and the feedback. So one of the things to consider when executing the program and making sure that uh, things are in place is also to consider that people are visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Uh, and when coming out with uh, the coaching, briefing, promotional materials, rubrics, and queuing, um, for visual learner, they absorb and retain information better when it's presented in pictures and charts. So auditory learners uh, prefers listening on what is being presented. And for kinesthetic learner, they prefer the physical experience. So for the legislative uh, dimensions, because of the implications of COVID, the event has to be moved online. So purchasing business account on Zoom allows more participations, uh, participants to join and there's no limitation of the time of usage. Soft background music, 
uh, may be a good way to relax the participants in between switches and silences. So for the people involved in the project, it includes Club Zoom, RP, uh, FYP students, students from ITE and NYP, and also Urban Steps Academy. So each person's responsibility uh, includes the following. So Club Zones is the overall running of the event and the host. And also for the RP FYP students, they are the assigned judge in charge and also in charge of the volunteers uh, from the NYP and ITE. And uh, Ren was the uh, in charge, uh, overall in charge of a chief judge. And also uh, Mr. Aaron was the overall coordinator. So uh, for the analysis part, uh, what we uh, observed was that uh, everyone was not too sure who was the go-to person, uh, as we could see some confusion during, during the event. And of course, uh, we need to emphasize on uh, contingency planning. Uh, in case uh, if A happened, what could uh, B uh, do? So uh, of course, uh, being proactive in sending out instructions uh, and what to expect for the event. So uh, these were some of the feedbacks uh, that the participants uh, had to ask for a couple of times. And also uh, reminding uh, people to attend would be uh, the ROP FY students uh, role in that. And of course, to make the in-charge accountable and also oversee that things are on schedule. And also make sure that everyone is on track. Um, the communication and the transition could actually be smoother. Okay, so for dealing with uh, media and of course uh, inviting guests of honor and sponsors, um, there could be more could be done to promote the sponsors. Uh, one way is actually to make the price attractive and share it online so that the participants have something to look forward to. And of course, the coordination part, as mentioned earlier, could have been done better. So. Um, uh, for hosting part, I'm uh, so for analysis, there could be some, uh, a few um, hosts that could actually um, share the load uh, instead of one being in charge overall. And of course, uh, there could be someone mending the live uh, recording uh, when the, um, some people are typing and they could be, uh, be actually sharing the process uh, on Facebook as well. So um, there are some of the things that we note is also in case of uh, accidents or potential accidents, uh, there could be spotters around to warn and to flag it down. Uh, one of the participants in the open category was uh, doing it wrongly and uh, there was no one notifying uh, her. So, and I'd like to thank uh, Amaran and also Chun Leong for sharing uh, the um, uh, what they have done with me uh, so that I could actually come up with this content. And next, we have the next speaker. Uh, uh, and also for stakeholders, um, the event has to be run uh, properly uh, so that the potential employees have confidence to hire. And of course, uh, for sponsors, uh, if this is done really nicely, uh, which is actually uh, in the feedback, uh, they would actually come back in the future. Uh, and for the ROI, we have a 20% uh, ROI uh, on this event. So uh, this could actually be uh, channeled a little more towards the marketing effort. And of course, uh, getting uh, perhaps uh, rewarding some incentive for volunteers as well. So next, uh, Unisha will be sharing the process and the impact evaluation. Over to you. Okay, can you all hear me? Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Hi, my name is Yusnisha from the Yellow Team. I'll be touching on the process and impact evaluation. And basically, as we know, when we do a program, um, the evaluation, uh, the, this evaluation highlights the, uh, the program's strength and weaknesses for improvement. So I'm going to go on to process evaluation under Kindred's favorite virtual challenge. Uh, this uh, process evaluation is divided into three parts, which is input, activities, and also output. Okay, now, uh, Cindy, can you go on to the, the other, okay, the, the input, the input, please. Okay, thank you. Now, input here can be manpower, volunteer, and then I, I'm emphasizing on manpower, quality of equipment utilized, as well as quality of instructions provided. So, basically, manpower here has a shortage of manpower to the judges on doing that program itself. And then the quality of equipment utilized, uh, as always, um, you know, there's always internet connections 
issues here and there, especially when this uh, Kindred Spirit Virtual Challenge is our very first uh, virtual challenge. So, so uh, expect this kind of problems. Of course, uh, the, the, the success of these virtual challenges or uh, moving forward is actually the quality of the uh, connections on the internet. And then um, the quality of instructions provided. Uh, instructions were very good. Uh, safety, safety expects, pictures were shown and how to ensure safety uh, while you're doing the exercise are uh, all shown in the uh, video itself. All right, next please. Uh, apart from input, we have activities. So basically activities are uh, the time, time allotment for each activity. Uh, short frame time will be given for each category. Uh, the program flow, uh, early demonstration video should be given to the final list, uh, final, final list. Um, and then uh, arabesque that the, the, the uh, category that we are doing is basically the arabesque as uh, most of the participants, not all, did not wait for three seconds before they actually jump off to the other point. Uh, these questions, whether the participants are given the right information or whether they knew whether they are supposed to hold on to three seconds while they are, while they are doing at the, uh, at the arabesque, all right? Uh, adherence to safety, participants are given informed consent prior to the challenge. I think that was good. That was well done. Safety and all that was followed. Uh, and the other factor is output. So basically, output uh, measures the direct product of the uh, program. Meaning to say, in this case, I, I mentioned about number of participants. Apparently, all participants turned up. And then uh, there were no reporting of accidents happened throughout the challenge, which is good. Uh, evaluation was submitted, which I'm going to share with you later on. And then prizes presented um, were not attractive. However, it's a, free, it's a free registration, so do not expect much. But all in all, I think the effort was put on their prizes was pretty good. And then the participants were actually happy about it. No complaints on that, all right? And the level of engagement, I can see uh, everybody was so high and, and, and happy and, and, and they, you know, they had group picture, group picture taken at the end of the challenge. Next, please. All right. Apart from the uh, process evaluation, we also have impact evaluation, which is short term. So impact evaluation questions whether uh, knowledge, attitudes, behavior, and skills being imparted for participants in the program or for the training for that matter. All right. Uh, participants are aware on how to conduct the activities following guidelines. Like I said earlier, this is the first time they they do this for, uh, this uh, this challenge, so they would want to, you know, um, um, they would have to they would have learned how to manipulate or rather to to change uh, to do this via online. Okay, so it's not so uh, familiar to many, but uh, through this challenge, they learn how to do it via this online. Okay, uh, the desire to perform well is under attitudes uh, to, make, uh, to the next challenge. Uh, or they have the attitude to kind of train better for them to do better for the next challenge, all right? Uh, skills acquired, perhaps, uh, as you can see, uh, probably when you see the video, you might think that the arabesque was quite easy to do, but actually when you do it, it wasn't, it wasn't actually. So it takes a lot of focus and balance. So if you focus, you balance well. So that's what skills are. In terms of behavior, a uh, majority of the participants I've interviewed or rather uh, uh, asked, they were very eager to join for the next one and then they would, uh, yeah, would want to prepare for that beforehand. Yeah, next please. All right, uh, okay, there's another project that we have done. I'm going to sum up this quite fast. Uh, under Power Up Next Rates, okay, same thing, process evaluation is input. Uh, I felt that manpower was easy to, man to manage because there's only two staff, the host and the co-host, the co-host being the instructor. Again, the quality of equipment utilized, internet connections were not stable. Many, many a times it was frozen and then it get back. So that was one part that we need to improve on. And then the quality of instructions, it was very well versed in what she's doing and able to express us very well. Yeah. In terms of activities, time management was very well, one hour solid. Uh, the program flow was good. It starts with a warm up and followed by the actual workout and then, it's, it's, then, then it ends with a cool down. And then, uh, um, however, in terms of safety, I felt that there wasn't any, um, any safety talks or rather safety guidelines to tell the participants that, uh, you know, if you're not feeling well whatsoever, you shouldn't be okay, taking part in the exercise. Apart from that, the instructor's area was also quite, you know, had quite hazardous, all right, because there's a lot of things around and things like that. Okay, in output, number of participants, not all participants turned up, accidents were not reported at all. 
uh, uh, the participants throughout the whole uh, state throughout the whole workout. Uh, despite the workout was very challenging, was pretty tired. Everybody was there. Everybody didn't went out yeah. get out from the pits. Yeah, and then uh, it was good. The level of pitch was pretty high. Okay, next please. All right. In terms of knowledge, everyone learned really well. Attitude, skills, and behavior was pretty good as well. Instructors did a very good job in that. Uh, and kudos to that power up next challenge race. Next piece. All right. So these are the evaluation tools that uh, we did, uh, quantitative and qualitative. So basically, we did uh, an interview with two of the participants uh, during the kindred spirit. All right. So everybody kind of um, um, was happy with the club Zoom, but it can be better, especially uh, in terms of the connection uh, issues. Yes, next piece. All right, same thing. Questions asked like, is there anything you think can be done better? And how do you feel about your performance overall? Participants were pretty happy about it and they are eager to join for the next session, which is next year. Yeah. So this last slide of mine uh, shows the uh, summarizing of the, equal, uh, the qualitative and quantitative evaluation tools that we use in order to get this project done right. Okay, uh, thank you. Shari, your turn. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give two minutes for the last speaker. All right. So you are actually beyond time, but I'll give two minutes to the last speaker. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Good. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Sharina, and I'll be going through risk assessment, uh, risk management process as well as uh, the key, the management of key aspects of the event and the last would be the suggestions for improvement. So under the risk management, we have uh, identified two types of assessment, two methods of assessment, which is the location-based assessment as well, the, as, well as the activities-based assessment. So under location-based assessment, uh, we also identified impact hazard. As you can see from the next slide, thanks Cindy, next slide, uh, next, next. Where the pictures are? Yeah, uh, okay. Under the next picture. Yes, under the location based risk assessment, as you can see here from the pictures that I've put up, uh, there are possibilities of uh, impact hazards in the environment, uh, such as colliding with the people sharing the same space, as well as bumping or colliding into the items in the surrounding space. So, next on the activity base. So for the activity base, uh, what I've identified is the ergonomic and the psychosocial hazard. So in the ergonomic uh, hazard, uh, what we actually identify is that some of the exercises, uh, the coach actually allow for the participants to adapt variation to suit physical, uh, each competitor's physical abilities and mental capabilities. So, but uh, during the during the finals and as well as the online session, we uh, it is also observed that some participants do carry poor form, but this is of course, uh, there isn't much control on a virtual space because uh, you can only, uh, as far as the organizers can do is to actually just uh, give some pointers on what to carry out on good form and um, it's, up to the uh, it's up to the participant to, to manage them on their own. So in the management of the key aspects of event, uh, I've identified three. So determining of the activities and the challenge, the judging criteria and the publicity and participant management. So in the determining of activity and challenge, so the activities and challenges were verified for their safety and appropriateness by partnering professional coach, as well as uh, there's also a disclaimer for a demonstration, a safe demonstration on the execution of the challenge. And also what I've noticed and observed is the instruction for kids online fitness sessions were age appropriate, engaging and motivating. So for the judging criteria for uh, each of the events, so during the uh, preliminary, the rubrics were used uh, for alignment as well as um, the number of reps that they can do for the Tula Dandasana. And as for the finals, the components of agility, endurance for both kids and open category. Next, please. So these are the pictures of the scoring and the rubrics for the virtual challenge in the preliminary round. Next. So in terms of publicity and participant management, uh, we find that 
they uh, we went uh, the organizers went to specific social media platform to target different categories of audience and there's also awareness and particip uh, participation of these events through word of mouth um, okay, and also in the participant management, uh, the ops team and the admin was present to assist in the operation of the management during the online fitness session as well as during finals. So suggestions for improvement in terms of operation is to improve the transition between activities in the finals as well as perhaps maybe to regulate the number of participants for the online fitness session. To, to have a ratio maybe of one is to 15 uh, participants. And also to, for the organizers to demonstrate a good choice of environment and aesthetics for the ops teams, so as not to contradict in the safety compliance. Next, uh, okay, suggestions for improvement for the goals and outcome, maybe to improve on the goal outcome for each category, to better address the current culture and lifestyle for maybe open category, improve joint mobility and flexibility, and also for the case category, improve alignment and strength for better posture. And also perhaps maybe uh, for post-event, participants can be offered like uh, some takeaway, educational takeaway where they can actually add this into their fitness, uh, fitness routine in their lifestyle. So next, so um, for, on a summary, uh, we would like to thank you for the following people, Amaranath, Chun Leong, and also for the participant, Helen Wu, Chan Ping, and also Karina Tan for making it possible for me to, uh, for us to respond to, to us and to receive response from Charlene and Chantel Tan. So yeah, next, and these are the reference that we, our team use for our evaluation. So to conclude our presentation, uh, we'd like to thank you all the parties involved and hope this is good. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, could I trouble you to um, stop sharing? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so what I'll do is now first I will introduce the panel. Um, so first we have uh, Coach Tan. So Coach Tan, thank you very much for being part of the panel. So this is Coach Tan. And we also have uh, Karine. So Karine is the, um, uh, the one that you have thanked. So Karine is here as well. Um, let me see if I can find Karine. Okay. Karine as well, and then we also have got um, Ren. So this is Ren. He is also part of the Club Zoom team, the Chief Judge. And yes, let me spotlight. Okay, so this is Karine over here. All right. So let me see. And we also have got Robert. Robert from Club Zoom as well. And uh, yeah, I think that's um, that's the main uh, group that's going to be asking the questions. So could we have the first question from the um, club Zoom? Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, can, can, can hear me? Huh? So yes. Aju, um, uh, Aju, are you there? Aju? Ah, yes, yes. I'm yes, there. okay. My okay. question to you, uh, okay. for the open category, right, we did not have a large number of local participants. But surprisingly, we have a large number of international participants of high quality too. What do you think was the reason for our local, low local participation rate and how can we improve it? Okay. Thank um, you, Coach Tan. Personally, I feel I that go ahead. for locals, right, uh, for locals to actually like uh, participate in these kind of challenges, it's something very new to them. It's not like... Uh, something that happens like uh, everywhere, you do not really see it. So it's quite hard for people to like kind of like uh, digest the fact that, you know, there's like a virtual challenge and then for them to get motivated to like really participate in this kind of stuff. Compared to like example, you know, like uh, people are not from Singapore. All right. Yeah. Like example, like uh example um western westerners and everything they are actually more open to this kind of idea they are more open to like um these kind of things so i would say that would have been the difference it's the mindset the way people think um on how to improve it i would say actually the best is actually uh advertising advertising it marketing and that's the only way you can try to reach out to people especially at this point of time that's the only way you can do it right uh, you can like try to get people to join, but there's apart from marketing and advertising, you can't really do much about it. Personally, that's what I feel. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I also ask the second question as well. Huh? Okay. Uh, Cindy, uh, what would you suggest be a key focus to invest in to ensure that the virtual events such as this proceed smoothly and to satisfy to satisfaction for, for all? Okay, uh, I think firstly, we could actually uh, look into the uh, operations. So, uh, the operations are now uh, with uh, the responsibility that they have, uh, and also um, being responsible to carry out uh, the events as per schedule, uh, based on the timeline. Uh, so when they are given this uh, responsibility and uh, so, uh, have having this uh, mon monetary tied to it, perhaps uh, they would uh, be more uh, inclined to make sure that things are carried out uh, because uh, mo mainly these are all volunteers. So uh, either way or we give a recognition to them and uh, inform uh, of uh, perhaps uh, maybe like school or a testimonial to them and all to encourage them to really uh, take on the role and uh, so that uh, the operations and the administrative could be actually run properly and when everyone plays the part uh, they would actually um, the event would actually run more smoothly as well yeah okay thank you cindy um ren maybe you want to uh, ask the next questions Sorry, Ren, uh, Ren, you are muted. Yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, just want to do some correction first. Uh, so for on the host part, yes, we will we, uh, do need the backup host and uh, maybe one or two hosts. But because this is not a talk show, we can't have the host keep uh, uh, having too much uh, uh, conversation uh, to, to so-called like uh, bring, bring some uh, outside ideas in. So mainly to shift to the sports arena. Uh, and since it's a first time, so I would think that the host is still quite, uh, is still quite, is still doing uh, very well uh, uh, handling the event. Uh, for location restriction wise, they, because of the, the COVID, so most of the teams are actually separated. So if, if initi even on the actual day, if the admin team and the judging team is separated, you'll see an even bigger lapse in the event, All right? Okay, so for my question, uh, I can get uh, maybe Sharina to answer this one. What are the main types of injuries that may be encountered by the kids and adults for such an online competition? Why? Uh, what can be done to mitigate this risk? Uh, do take note that in the registration online, the initial registration, there is already uh, the indemnity inside the terms and conditions. Yeah. Okay, uh, to address your question on the type of injuries that could possibly occur with the participants, because uh, from the interviews, uh, from the responses I get from the participants, some uh, do have past history of uh, injuries such as uh, lower back problems as well as uh, knee problems. So uh, this can actually um, be reintroduced back if not, uh, if not, if the, uh, the exercises are not executed properly uh, during that moment of time. As well as for those who um, are doing the exercise and experiencing pain, sharp pain can also be uh, one of the pain that is uh, which needs to be highlighted, like uh, to actually to stop when experiencing sharp pain. Um, perhaps maybe cramping and also maybe some strains or pressure pain on the joints. So these are, uh, these are some of the injuries that may occur during the activities itself. Um, we do understand that there is some disclaimer and there's some instructions given to the participants to actually uh, try to uh, reduce this kind of risk but um, 
there's nothing much, there's not much of a control from the organizer's side uh, in terms of uh, to actually stop these injuries from happening. What they can do for the participant is to actually, uh, perhaps for the online classes, maybe do check in once in a while in between exercises to see if the participants are doing uh, good. And also, but for the finals, I'm, I mean, uh, there's, there's not much control over there. So yeah, definitely one more thing is also to keep on asking them to hydrate, I guess. So that's my um, reply, my question, uh, my answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, Kush Tan, do you, uh, oh, sorry, Ren, you, you want to ask the last, last question, question or, yeah. okay, can. Maybe, so last question should be to for you, Yusnisha. Uh, Yusnisha. Okay. Yes, hi. Uh, hi. After speaking with some of the participants, what do you gather to be the main takeaway or benefit from participating in this event? And can we, what can the organizer do or, the, or even the participants do to enhance the experiences? Okay, hi. Hi, Ren. Um, in order to, uh, I guess, uh, the two person I talked to, they were very nice. They were very um, engaging and things like that. They, they were saying that uh, um, this is the first, uh, first uh, virtual challenge project. Therefore, a lot of uh, things that need to be improved. Uh, one of them is actually for them to uh, um, train better prior to the competition. I felt that the, the registration part and the, and, the, and the competition is a bit too short in that sense. So they do not have enough time to train so forth. And then uh, the other thing that can be better to make this uh, challenge more attractive, it would be to make the prizes more attractive. I understand that this, uh, this is a free registration program. Perhaps maybe next year and moving forward, we can charge people, you know, those who register, you get them to pay for the registration fee. And with that, we can make uh, the more prizes more attractive uh, in terms of uh, perhaps monetary. And perhaps that I felt that in that way, we can even um, get in the locals to come in more to participate for the next years and the fear moving forward. Yeah, that's what I felt. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very uh, much. Yeah. Let me just, just to let you know, uh, yeah, because of the short time and our, mm. the, the, the so-called the COVID situation, the circuit breaker, uh, we, had, we were trying to uh, so-called reconfigure everything from physical to online. Even uh, till June, there is a very late confirmation of some of the uh, location facilities. So that's why our main target was uh, participants who are already uh, actively participating in uh, sports activities, else there will not be enough time for the general public to come in. We will want to open it even wider uh, yeah. since we are posting on Facebook. But, uh, to, to make sure that uh, there is less uh, injuries occur to the general public, we try to maintain on whoever is already uh, in, in the sports uh, facility, uh, doing sports and uh, uh, who are active, right? For the sponsor side, uh, prizes side, uh, that one uh, is something to, to look into, yes, yeah, we, are, we agree. Uh, as for the registration fee, that one uh, is actually very catchy. Even if you take a look at the current situation, some of the uh, international virtual event, like the Philippines one, they only uh, take in, uh, what, how, how do I say, it's only uh, $15 USD, but it's like a very huge event. I thought it's 10, uh, 10 USD. Uh, 10 or 15, I forgot it. <laughs> or maybe it's only 15 uh, uh, Philippine dollars, yeah. So, so it's, it depends on how wide is the, the participants uh, number that we are taking. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Ren. Thank you. Okay. Um. I think Club Zoom is headed off to do the virtual training. But uh, before we uh, go, Coach Tan, do you do you have anything you want? Uh, anything you want to say, Coach Tan? Okay. Uh, I just uh thank, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for the contribution, and I I I mean I hope after this. Uh, this journey, uh, I would really like to engage all of you to join us because uh, sport is a networking industry, you get I me? Mean? So I, I, uh, if you can, please find out, uh, you can have my contact number, Aaron can pass you my contact number. Uh, if you can, drop dive my premises and stuff like that. 
then we get to know each other more because moving forward, right, we've got a series of events coming up. So we, we started this virtual thing, of course, uh, like uh, we did mention, of course, the plus point is, uh, I mean, like I said, our strong connection, even Tyron Washington, the world 400 meter champion, was very gracious to give us publicity uh, right at the very early stage to, to, to talk to Channel News Asia, 938 and stuff like that. So we, we learned from the, I mean, your feedback are really uh, uh, very appreciated. We, we, we would, like, would like to have these notes. Huh? Then after that, we will reflect. And, and of course, this is a journey. You know, when I started a meet in, back in 2012, I only started with only 150 people, but last year it actually spin off to 1,500 people. But of course, the, the heartbeat is, I mean, track and field, everybody wanted to be at the stadium itself. So now, um, just, I actually want to, just want to give uh, one advice only uh, that, I, I, that I learned the last two weeks ago. I heard this uh, Channel News Asia, I mean, there was one, one speaker talking about now, they, 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 they know that they, they still need the physical aspect to be at a venue, to have competition. So, the virtual is good. The virtual is you, 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 you do get to uh, outreach to a lot of uh, uh, consumer out there. But uh, we, they, they start to allow maybe uh, doing at the on-site, at the, at the premises itself. So, of course, Coming in November, right? We are we are we are realizing up with uh the bodybuilding federation, and you know we're going to try out another another way of doing it, on site and virtual. Now combining both. So what I'm trying to share with you is entrepreneurship. Uh, a lot of time we had to go through a lot of trial and error one. Huh? So it doesn't mean the first time uh, you'll get it right, but you you need a lot of uh courage uh, to. It's okay that like, what you all say is true. You know, there will be a lot of issue and stuff like that. But let's say, assume that, let's say next year, the, uh, the COVID is over, right? If we go back to stadium setting, like for example, Ren, uh, Bok, uh, or even Karin, we are all seasonal because we've we done it so many times. That, that, that type of event, we are very sure you'll go back to 1,000 over at least. We, we, we have no issue with, with that. So, um, so this, this is something just to share with you guys is... Uh, you know, you guys probably will need some mentorship. Like we, we are seasoned campaigners. So uh, if you don't mind, we are I very capable one. I, I'm willing to share, you know, with all of you. Come and engage us. Build some network and stuff like that. Oh? Okay, so I, I need to rush off to another <laughs> event now. Yeah, so I, I'll you. catch up with you. Okay, Okay. thank you. Thank you so much, Coach Dan. And yeah, thank you yeah. to the Club Zoom. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. And thanks to everyone from Yellow Team. Thank you. Uh, okay, all the best you. to Club Zoom for the virtual yeah. event. Okay, okay, see you. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, thank you. Okay, so um, next, right, we move on to the green team. Uh, before we start with the green team, um, i just like to see Christian, you there, Christian? Yeah, hi. Hi, Christian. Okay, so uh, Christian and Claudia, you're there. So um, just want to introduce, Christian and Claudia are from the Natural Bodybuilding and, uh, and Fitness Association. So they will be the judges for the next section, lah. All right, so welcome. So I just spotlight your video so everyone can see you. All right, okay, great. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, green team, whenever you're ready, please proceed to flash your slides. And uh, just a reminder to everyone, please stick to your allocated time. Just now I actually uh, gave a little bit of extra time to yellow team because I felt it was not very fair to the last speaker if she didn't have a chance to speak. But right, green team, please keep to the allocated time, all right? 20 minutes, I'm timing you. Okay, all right, so green team, please uh, proceed to flash your slides, thank you. Can see our slide, can see my screen or not? Okay, so Roger, um, please go yeah. to full screen mode. And once you're ready, I'll start the timer. Can you see? Okay, right. are you ready? Yep. Okay, time starts now, go. Good morning everyone, uh, industry guests. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, my name is Kazbani, the green team leader. Introducing my other teammates, Suzy, Deborah, Arif and Roger. Presenting the art of natural bodybuilding and kindred spirit events. So next slide. 
following are the presentation outline. And before I proceed, I will be passing forward to you the next presenter, Roger. Hey everybody, I'm Roger from Green Team. So I'll be talking about this uh, bodybuilding and virtual challenge, the elucidation. Okay, basically, why we have this challenge? So some of our statistics, uh, national health population the statistics shows 2017, 64% of population have chronic health conditions compared to 56% four years ago. So why is it so critical? Because, okay, let's look at 20.6% age above 18 are smokers. This cost the economy $193 billion per annum. And 10% of Singaporeans are diabetic, whereas the global average is only 8.8%. And that's not very good considering Singapore is such a small country that you manage to beat global average. And the economy costs $174 billion for Singapore. So these numbers, if you drill down your statistics, uh, realize the real the the usual health problems are uh, overweight, obesity, daily smoking, diabetes, hypertension. What is interesting, I noticed in 2010 and 2017, they included hyperlipidemia, which means high cholesterol in the account. And this cholesterol thing increased from 25% to 33%. It did not go down. And another survey they did was physical activity. 82%, 74%, 81% in 2007, 2013, 2017. That's a lot considering that we have NS for all the men. So now let's look at it, drill down into each individual category. Mental issues, one in seven Singaporeans have mental disorder. These are the ones that are admitted. Those that are not admitted is not in this. Then smoking as usual, always 10% throughout the years. It has not gone down and doesn't look too good. And here is an interesting one about diabetics versus the general population. This bar chart, you see two different colors, right? The green colors are the diabetics. The darker blue one is the general population. Diabetics excel in everything from obesity, hypertension, blood cholesterol, and poor mental health versus general population. Then look on your right, the smoking also. Diabetic smoker versus non-smoker, again, they excel. So, is a concern. And furthermore, now we are in COVID-19, mental issues could escalate. Uh, this survey was done in April only. 20% don't feel too good about it. And looking at the situation, maybe up to end of the year, it could get worse. So now let's re rephrase and remember the numbers again. The number is 64% of general population for a small country like Singapore. And economic costs, 193 billion for smokers, 174 billion for diabetics. So of course the government is concerned. So being a small country, right? So the health issues we identified, basically all these diseases are lifestyle diseases. The use, problem facing, smoking, diabetes, fast food. And to counter this, bodybuilding is a good avenue because athletes have good mental focus. It's a coping mechanism for stress. And nobody emphasizes diet more than bodybuilders. Uh, and the outreach is virtual challenge because with COVID-19 some more, it's an opportunity to focus on diet to get fit anytime, anywhere. And a good body is a good self-esteem, way cooler than holding a secret in hand. And because the challenge is done online, actually we targeted whole like the polytechnic tertiary students as well as the general population in natural art of bodybuilding. Uh, anybody can join. So in educating the priority population is to instill a lifestyle to minimize these identified health problems the nation is facing. And it is within reach for everybody because the keyword is natural and not supplements. There's no cost in buying supplements for this. And for Singapore, there's fitness park island-wide connectors is within everybody's means to get it. At the current moment, uh, this MBFA was postponed maybe because of logistic and physical constraints and control. So I've ended mine and go on to the next presenter, Susie.
Hi, I'm Susie. Hi, hello. I'm Susie. So I will present the NIST assessment for both the art of natural bodybuilding and also the kinder spirits for elite athletes. Next, please. So the first one, the purpose and scope for the art of the natural bodybuilding. So they have this tagline, stronger body, stronger mind. So bodybuilding is not just about figure, physics, but it's also about fitness and exercise, exercising and doing physical activities and also to eat proper without using drugs and other supplements. And most importantly is as a coping mechanism for stress. Next, please. So we have primary data and secondary data. Next. Okay, so let's look at the graph there. So the highest is the 7% of population which age around 18 to 34 years old who has mental, di mental disease. So it is said that 18% of Singapore youth actually suffer from depression. Next please. And the article here said that almost 3,000, they received almost 300 calls more for the helpline to compare to last year. Next, please. So we, as for the analyzing data, we take mental disorder as the most important health problem here. Next. So the BPR modeling. So we have the size of pro problem. We rate it at eight. As mentioned earlier, one is to seven people in Singapore has experienced mental disorder in their lifetime or even more. Then we have seriousness of problem that includes economic loss, involvement of other people, severity of problem and urgency of solving problem and also the effectiveness of the intervention with total up, which total up to 59. So next please. So let's look at the risk factors. We have biological, psychological and sociological. And let's look at the metrics. The more important and more changeable one is the stigma and also lack of support from family and friends, which is very, very important. And more important and less changeable is the illness itself, the depression, anxiety, and mental health. And lastly, more changeable and less important is the social discrimination. Next, please. So we have, next, we have the proceed proceed model. So the predisposing factor of this art of natural bodybuilding is the skills to train in bodybuilding itself and then the enabling factor is the access to the program and the reinforcing is for people to support natural bodybuilding. Next. So let's recheck. So this net, the art of natural bodybuilding is to keep fit by doing physical activities and to eat healthy and look good and also to improve self-esteem and self-image. Next please. So I will move to Kindred Spirit Virtual Challenge for Elite Athletes. Next, please. So majority of the elite athletes are from Fun Yu High School. Next. So what is the purpose and scope for this program? So it is to promote sporting values and friendship locally and also overseas and to maintain level of fitness, especially during this lockdown and COVID period. Next. So I, we have primary data and also secondary data. Next. So let's look at the graph by Sports Singapore here. So, so the participation rate in 2015, it is only 27.6 who exercise regularly. Exercise means to do physical fitness, to improve their physical fitness and mental well-being by doing physical activity. And for there's only 26.4 who exercise frequently, which, which is three times per week. And we look forward at the 2017, there's increased number of 32.1% and more population exercise frequently at 35.9, which is, I think now they are more open to do physical activities, which I think this program will help them. Next. So also, the men we take mental disorder as the first major health problem. Next. So in total for this, we read them, we read the, the problem at 46. Next please. So let's look at the prior, prioritization metrics. So the more important and more changeable is the period of inactivity of the elite athlete itself and also less interaction with the coaches. And more important and less changeable is the interaction and isolation between the athletes and also the emotional distress itself. Next, please.
So let's look at the pre-supposy. The predisposing factor is to have online psychological counseling during this pandemic and to enable the enabling factor is for them to train together online and also to have social support by interacting and training together. Next, please. So let's recheck. So this event is actually to provide platform for elite athletes to compete in competition even during COVID-19 period and to have satisfaction and enjoyment and also good health by doing that. Next, please. I will pass to Arif. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Arif. I'll be talking about the risk assessment and evaluation. Okay, next, please. So basically, this will be a process flow of how your uh, risk assessment is being done. So firstly, we have the hazard identification. So what is, what, is, what is it? What is hazard identification? Next will be the risk analysis and evaluation. So how bad is the risk that we are talking about? And then we're moving forward to the risk control. So how, what can be done for this risk that we have? Okay, and then we have the control implementation to emit eliminate and reduce risk. So thus, how can we do to eliminate this risk? So next slide. So just a brief uh, description of our uh, event risk assessment. Okay, so every event, uh, we are always prone to risk. So the, uh, basically, there's from low risk and there's also high risk. And then identifying the risk that's involved can, be, uh, can vary from the activity, the location, the environment, as well as the number of participants in the event. And then once we identify the risk, they are managed at various levels. So preferably from a small risk that is reasonably practical or to even a fatal risk. And then we go on to the control implementation, whereby it's necessary to maintain the health and safety of our participants, organizers, as well as the public. Next slide. So we see this uh, just a brief summary of the risk assessment, which is the risk levels. So we have the low risk up to all the way to the high risk. Next slide. Okay, so we have the Kindred Spirit Virtual Challenge Hazard Risk Metrics. So basically what this metric is about, uh, it, I have listed down three different hazards that is being identified. So firstly would be the poor form, which uh, the consequence would be an injury by the musculoskeletal injury. And thus the existing control measures uh, that is put into place would be a proper guidance whereby they showcase the exercise prior to the challenge. Thus the likelihood of this uh, hazard would be a remote as well as the severity of this hazard would be moderate. Moving on for the next hazard would be the obstructions of the items as well as it will cause injury to the participants and the existing control measures being done would be the safety checks of the participants' surroundings. The likelihood would be remote, uh, severity will be moderate also. As we have the poor internet connection which will lead to miscommunication between the participants and the organizers. Thus, the existing control measures put into place would be the repeat of instructions, which make it clear. And the likelihood of uh, this hazard to occur is very frequent, as well as the severity would be a minor. Next slide, please. Next, we have the art of bodybuilding hazards and risk metrics. So for this event, uh, it's most likely, uh, it's more focused to the participants individual themselves. So first, we have the poor nutrition management which will cause a poor health consequence. Thus, uh, existing measure control would, uh, that is being taken place would be proper and de detailed nutrition talk towards the participants so they can have a better uh, progress up to the event. The likelihood for this to occur is remote as well as the severity will be major due to health consequences. And next, the hazard will, uh, will be bad technique. So uh, the consequence would be poor oxygen flow. As the existing control measures that is introduced would be the training modalities that the MBFA has given. Yeah, so the likelihood would be rare, as well as severity would be moderate. So I'll be passing on to the next speaker would be Kazbani. 
Hi, uh, my name is Kaz here. So, uh, legislative dimensions, the art of natural bodybuilding. So, we focus on the spirit of true sportsmanship, fairness and integrity, showcase the seriousness of the sports together with Anti-Doping Singapore. As said, NBFA are unique and separate them from other competitions events. So, next slide. Program administrative dimensions and the kindred spirit. So publicity and marketing support with the following schools and industry assist in the event with EDM, websites, direct marketing and mailers. Next slide. The competition is free for all participants by the PTX. So events do have rehearsals as well. Next slide. The venue held at Sports Lifestyle Center. Only admins and staff are able to access the premises. Next please. Logistic deployments. Kindred Spirits is live events through Zoom. So there's of course equipment, laptops, green screen, etc. And here are the following logistics needed. Next slide. Alright, so the next one will be the manpower deployment for Kindred Spirits. So total of 29 judges. The judges are from the following respective schools. We have 19 volunteers as well for the following roles. So partners and relations. Next slide, please. So here are our educational partnership and of course next slides will be seeing the sponsors. Of course the sponsors uh, going back to the next slide. Roger, yes. So sponsors, we sponsors the events are successful. So thank you sponsors. All right, next slide please. So source of funding and ROI. So mostly is from sponsorship. Next slide. Okay, so the total sponsorship is we get at 2530. Next slide, please. And the total expenditure of 2009.76. So moving forward to the next slide. Okay, so as you can see the chart, right? Uh, it's a positive 25.89%. So it's a good thing. So a quick run before I pass on to the next speaker. Uh, we are able to monetize the event further through live stream on Vimeo or YouTube. It brings the event content through a broader audience, pay-per-view broadcasts over the internet. So perhaps near future, we are able to engage a YouTube product partnership for Asia-Pacific emerging markets to elevate the online events to the next level. So passing on to the next speaker. Yeah, hi. So I'm Deborah. Uh, now I'll talk about the process and impact evaluation of the following, the art of natural bodybuilding, and the Kinder Spirit Virtual Challenge, followed by the evaluation of operation and publicity. Next. Next. So this process uh, evaluation is done based on the materials provided by Daniel and Weilong on Module 1 of the Art of Natural Bodybuilding. So this course was conducted via the MPFA website using PowerPoint slide. So transition of the slide was smooth, however, uh, too wordy. Okay, suggest to replace with more image to make it more appealing. So most participants are able to understand bodybuilding and use knowledge of drugs, food and training to their benefits uh, after going through the program. Next. So impact evaluation uh, is measured through first knowledge. Uh, participants acquired the knowledge of healthy lifestyle, uh, aesthetic in vascularity, fitness and fertility, sports and exercise. Next. So attitude, uh, bodybuilding is uh, gen generally perceived uh, perceived as being vain by showcasing the body. So, uh, however, participants are able to realize bodybuilding enhance proper solving skills, uh, develop positive mindset, gaining healthy body through sports and exercise. Next. So, for skill, uh, participants able to identify success in bodybuilding uh, based on the four areas, psychological, nutrition, training, and aesthetic and creative music, uh, and understand that Without these four areas, it is uh, not complete. Next. So for behavior, uh, the participants are motivated to try out bodybuilding because they are inspired uh, by the benefits and the enhanced physical and mental development gained without using any steroid. Next. So this uh, process evaluation is done based on the Kinder Spirit Virtual Challenge final on 1st August. Next. So due to the COVID-19, uh, the event was changed to online platform via Zoom. So it caters to global uh, population with different time zones. So during the final event, participants uh, may be disqualified due to internet connectivity issues. 
Uh, signing up for the challenge was simple with eight easy steps via the website and uh, adequate rehearsal was done before the finals. Uh, next, uh, instruction were passed down through WhatsApp during briefing and there were subsequent reminder on appropriate setup and safety measures. Uh, I have also observed that uh, non standardized uh, venue actually may result in inconsistent uh, assessment outcome. Next. So, feedback. Yeah, Deborah, you have uh, one minute to wrap up. Okay, uh, that there was inadequate uh, practices and unclear instruction prior to the event. So committee was not well versed resulting in poor organized workflow. Lah. So uh, feedback from the participants uh, facing difficulties performing the routine exercise is different from what was being briefed. Yeah, okay, next. Uh, next. So output, uh, the number of participants targeted were met in all categories. Next. So for this uh, knowledge uh, feedback from the judges and athletes uh, uh, benefit from the importance of performing with the right techniques, then the judges learn to recognize the movement to ensure fairness in judging. Next, attitude, uh, positive attitudes towards their own areas of expertise were displayed from both the athletes and judges. Next, so the skills, uh, proper skill and standing were also acquired and observed from both of them. Uh, next. So uh, behavior-wise, uh, athletes show uh, intrinsic motivation to have the uh, enthusiasm in sports and judges gain new experience. Next. So for the uh, operation, right, so the advantage of using Zoom enable people from the different time zone to participant, uh, participate in the event. The setback will be the internet uh, connectivity uh, and the stability of uh, Zoom for more than 100 users at one go. Next. So for the publicity, uh, so the cancellation of polite and the uniform category were due to inadequate uh, promotion to the various uh, institutes like the police and ITEs. Yeah, uh, thank you. So now I'll pass it on to uh, Kaspani. All right, uh, everyone, uh, thank you. So these are the suggestions for improvement. Uh, of course, uh, you can see we can monetize the event itself. Uh, there's a lot of areas that we can uh, improve on. There's a lot of it. There's a list of it. Um, take a look, uh, look through for it. Uh, I believe that um, this co uh, competitions or event can bring uh, us to the next level, which I totally look into it. Um, so that's all. Um, thank you from the green team and thank you, industry guests. Thank you very much. Uh, could I trouble you to stop sharing your slides? Uh, Roger, can stop sharing, please. Okay, um, what I'd like to do is um, I've realized, okay, uh, we have got a few industry guests here for this segment, so I will uh, introduce them. Sorry, Roger, is it possible to stop sharing? Uh, you just stop. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, once again, I would like to introduce our our partners from NBFA. Um, on screen, you have got on the left side Claudia, who is the um, yeah over there. So Claudia is the uh, honorary general secretary of NBFA, right? And on her right or on her left, sorry, is Mr. Christian Go, who is the president of NBFA. Um, and we, okay, I'll, I'll come back to you shortly. Maybe you can just say a few words to introduce yourselves to everyone. Uh, we've also got Brittany. So I think, Deborah, just now I saw the picture that you used a little bit familiar. Was that you, Brittany, in, yes. in Deborah's pictures? <laughs> okay, so this is uh, Brittany. She's also from NBFA. And Hi. I think um, Ibrahim Siha couldn't join us today, right? So I think that's all we have. Um, Christian and Claudia, you want to just say something before we start the questioning? Oh, yeah. And later um, we go to Brittany. Yeah. Just, just a few things about yourself and the organization. Oh, okay. Um, uh, well, <laughs> uh, I, 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 actually, to be frank, I just want to really thank the, the, the team uh, who did the presentation. And, and, mm. and uh, honestly, especially when it comes to what Roger had presented, it really... Uh, it really show what we is exactly what we are trying to do also to, to solve uh, the uh, nutritional uh, aspect uh, lifestyle aspect uh, the mental health issues problem with the population we understand 
uh, how bodybuilding and especially we do it naturally, how it can really impact a person's life and uh, mm-hmm. how a person can add value to both themselves, their, their loved ones and even the society. So, well, uh, and, and uh, of course, the most important thing that we do is freedom. So this is why we have our association. And we really want to get a message out that uh, body really, body building is really for everybody. It's about body and building, building the body, and you, you incorporate health, fitness, and that makes you a stronger person. Um, not just in your physical being and how you look, but in the whole process of trying to achieve that uh, state of uh, aesthetic excellence. Okay, you will develop a stronger mind. Okay, and that can help you overcome a lot of challenges in life. Yeah, that's okay. yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Claudia, you want to introduce yourself as well, or anything to say? <laughs> um, yes, I, 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 I totally first, agree with uh, what Christian was saying just now uh, regarding uh, about what we are doing for bodybuilding. And i uh, also very thankful for this team to bring up, you know, what, how we can actually improve ourselves and uh, the evaluation part is what I really appreciate. Thank you. Um, I, if, if you don't mind, Brittany, um, you have an, a very interesting story. Uh, about how you got into this whole um, sport of bodybuilding. Just wondering whether you would like to share to inspire everyone here a little bit about your experience and, and yeah, what, what you've done. Okay, sure. Um, when I moved here, I had just had some situations where I just, you know, it's a new start, don't really know anybody, was a bit overweight, was very depressed, and just wasn't going through a great time like personally. Um, I had met Christian and it really helped me to reevaluate some things in my life. Like I had a uh, reactive hypoglycemia where your blood sugar spikes like every three hours. And he was very knowledgeable to educate me on how to fix that through diet and also through training. Um, and my body fat percentage changed dramatically. So to me, it's very important. And I'm very thankful too for the team who have you know, showed, shown us some slides, I took some pictures, because it helps us to evaluate, like, we've gone through it, and we know what it is, but to see it in a, like, written down, it'll help to explain more, maybe on our Instagram, or when we do the event, and publicizing it better for next year, so that we can reach people like myself that went through certain situations, and maybe even have more mental, or, or depressed, or at home, and don't really have a lot of activities, and something to reach them to Get them to be able to be active and have something to look forward to but also it's a hobby that's that i feel like is great as far as like you said instead of like binge drinking or smoking or things like that thank you very much Brittany. um so going back to christian and claudia um would you like to proceed with the questions for oh, yeah. the uh, participants yeah thank you well again you know uh the, the homework that uh, you guys have, uh, the team have done uh, is, is, is one is awesome. Okay. So I have, I have a question with, uh, to Roger first, okay. Based on the population trends which you have um, studied in the Singapore context, okay. Uh, this is some, actually honestly speaking, some figures that we also always wanted to dig into, but uh, we, we're not that academically inclined and we, we, we love the data that you're showing us. So which is the more crucial aspect of health which we would need to address through the program. Um, uh, okay, there's nutrition. Uh, is it about, do you think that uh, it's more about uh, uh, the populations need more educations on proper nutrition, okay, or uh, their, their, their training, uh, or I want to add on to, uh, their lifestyles, uh, how they should manage it, um, and, and how, pertaining to a uh, uh, stronger body, stronger mind. Uh, 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 it, will, it will help in uh, strengthening. Uh, they understand that it will, it, when they exercise, not, it will strengthen their body and also strengthen their mind. So it means tackling mental health issues in that aspect. Okay. Uh, actually, coming from athletic background, right? Uh, but in general, this statistic the government did is for the general population. And we know majority of Singapore population, they are all sanitary lifestyle. They don't move much. Mm. Uh, most of them are office worker. So the downside to this is for most athletes, usually we spend about one or two hours a day to train. Mm. So that is the commitment. 
So for most population, they wake up, they have three meals a day, and these three meals are all carbo-loading yeah. meals. It's very detrimental to their health. So mm. we can keep telling them, we can keep advocating them to have a balanced diet. They will not really do it from what I observe because they just go to hawker center, pack breakfast, lunch, dinner, all carbo, and, <laughs> and they sit in the office. There's no time for them to work out. So mm. when we advocate a sport, be it bodybuilding, athletics, or just cycling, right? When they mm. really do it, uh, they realize the performance level they wish to achieve. That's why triplet, trifactor is so successful because there is a performance benchmark for them to achieve. For them to achieve that benchmark, right? They need to change their diet. They need to train harder. So the same with bodybuilding. If you need to have a six pack, you want to have a six pack or you want to do 10 chin-ups, you need to have a commitment for those reps and you need to change your diet to have the lean physique. That's where we entice them to go into the diet stream based on the benchmark that we set or the perception that, hey, your three meals a day at Hawker Center is not going to work out for you. You will not be able to achieve that. So you first, you entice them with going into the spot and then set the benchmark and then they'll climb towards that direction. I feel that this is the best way to go because for most people who lose weight because of their wants, if they don't have the wants there, they will not do it. See, so, I mean, it shows that the government is concerned. Otherwise, they won't spend billions of dollars doing the connector park island-wide and then all this advertising on TV and everything. Is the the billion dollar figure you see at uh, economic cost is also a concern. Yeah, so it's actually very conducive for us to advocate sports in this manner. That's how I feel. Uh, initiate them first and then make them set goals. That's where they will start to go towards this direction. So it's more like a general approach uh, towards uh, 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 incorporating uh, a healthy lifestyle where it involves both diet and physical activity and setting yourself some aims. Lah. So we have to tell people that this is yeah, what because, you have to do. Lah. Yeah, that, because what I observe, right, there are always people who like to, like, they call it sporting khakis. They are in a group. They only cycle leisurely over the weekends. And after the cycling trip, they go and munch, munch, munch. Oh, uh, yeah. Back to all the carbo food again. It doesn't work. Is it yeah. They thought that was is sufficient, but actually they are just balancing what they expanded and then put back in again. It's back to zero. So because they they have no idea what is the calorie count or what's the commitment required, unless they are engaged actively in the sport, then they more or less know. So in a in a way, coaching also matters in this aspect. Uh, probably the industry needs a lot more coaches than now to get the population to be fitter and healthier. Yeah, so individuals themselves, they don't have prior knowledge. They will always, they will not know they are doing the wrong things. Unless a critical health problem hits them, then they will look for help. Yeah. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. So what you mean is that education is key, but it must be supported by attitudes as well. Yes, yes. Yeah? Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, so next question. Okay, I have a question for Suzy. Um, with reference to the structure of challenges and exercise that was that were presented just now, how appropriate do you think the event is for the targeted audience? Yeah, Suzy, you can hear. Yeah. You hear me? Sorry, can you repeat? Okay, sure. With reference to the structure of challenges and exercises that were presented just now, how appropriate do you think the event is for the targeted audience? The challenges and exercise, how appropriate are they for the audience? Okay, I think like, because, the, is it for the kindred spirit? Yes, it's uh, for everything. Lah. Okay. Yeah. So actually, like, I believe that different category, like different ages have different exercise which is suitable for them. 
So the most important one is to know what is suitable for them. So it is not like too overwork out or too easy for them to do. Okay. And also like uh, socially, like they, they can love how act to exercise, but then I think like socially and peer plays a part, like they need to have a partner to work out together to make it a, su a successful one, like what Roger said. Like if they have a goals, they need someone to be with them to achieve the goals together. Because like they can do it themselves, but it is a little bit hard because there's no moti lesser motivation to, 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 to achieve the goals. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, any? Sorry, who's uh, asking the next question, Christine? Is uh, Bray? Are you alright? You there? Oh yes. Uh, yeah, let me hold up real quick. Hold on. Sorry, is Bray asking the the next question? Yes, Bray. Bray. Bray has okay. Yeah. Okay, Bray. Sorry, Bray. I think your <laughs> your video is off. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. One second. Oh. Sure, sure. Okay. So anyway, um, thank you to everyone uh, for answering your questions so far. Really appreciate it. Okay, Britt, you're back on. Okay. Um, what can we do to improve any safety measures or anything that you would advise us on? Okay, um, sorry, who is this question for? Anyone in particular? Arif. Or, or would it be Arif? Arif, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Arif. Okay, so uh, to me, the safety measures, right? You're talking about for the event? Yeah. Okay, so basically, to me, uh, as mentioned, uh, what Roger has mentioned, uh, just to back up whatever you said, is that to me, diet is important uh, for this uh, event. Because we tend to educate them by giving nutrition talks and also the training modalities such as posing classes and all. Yeah, so it's best that we can also um, continuously motivate them. As we say, for example, uh, maybe uh, I have this example of whereby I've joined a challenge, but it's a 10 weeks challenge. Okay, so this 10 weeks is uh, based on how we can change our physique as well as to improve our healthy lifestyle. So basically what they do is that for every end of the week, they tend to have this uh, motivational like posters and then to um, motivate us um, towards our goals. So I believe that uh, these motivation factors as well as uh, a good dietary, um, dietary like factor on how we can improve our dietary or not to you know do extreme deficit or uh, bulk up to the goals lah. yeah okay so maybe, maybe uh, this can be one of the improvisation okay that's great that's really good thank you okay. thank you Arif okay we have um sorry who do we have next uh, yeah, I think there's I have a next question uh, for uh, Kaspani. All right, Kaspani. By the way, Kaspani is a bodybuilder. So oh. you can you can get him to... I was yeah. looking at him, he looked like, more, looked like one. And then yeah, there you go. Kaspani. Next one? Okay. There, there, okay. There, there, here he goes. So, so the, anyway, this one will be very good for you. Uh, okay. The event, our event uh, was uh, had a very poor showing for local athletes. Hmm. Uh, but overwhelming for international athletes. Uh, even for our own uh, annual championship, right, we have about fifty percent from overseas. Rather, so and and so, what do you think? Uh, why this is so? Why why is it that uh, the sign up rate uh, among the local athletes is not uh, higher when we supposed to be targeted for the local athletics, uh, athletes? And uh, yeah, and then especially to to get them involved during this COVID period. Okay. Um. All right. I, I think I understand where where it's coming from. When uh, you're you're talking about online, right? Or you're talking about physical for them to fly off to to Singapore? If you can touch on both, uh, Okay, okay. that'd be great. Yeah. So let's say <laughs> the online one first. The the one the one with this current one first. Yeah. Okay. Let Let's say for during this this COVID period. Um. Number one, there's there's a few factors which I find is a bit uh hard for them 
they, mm-hmm. they can diet for sure. 100% they can diet. As it's at home, right? It's quite easy. But the, the unfortunate part is during their training program, meaning they want to train, now the gym is closed. Mm-hmm. So how do they train? Right? It's very hard. So that part, they're going to skip it. So, so number two, let's say they are talking about, okay, it's fine, it's online. So my next question to them is that, because as far as I'm experienced athlete while, while competing, um, besides the diet, besides the training, you need to look good, right? Mm-hmm. While you're on stage. So if you're at home online, is the lighting is the most important factor. Uh, yeah. the, without the proper lighting, you, can't, you as a judge, you can't see the definition and the symmetry of the physique. Whether, whether it's good, you have to turn back, okay, one quarter turn, and then another quarter turn, that would be so hard because the lighting play a big role for judges to score the points. So in, in order for us to, to actually um, make them to join us, I think it's, it's more towards the educational part. This is, this is my take. Okay, probably we can offer uh, online expert clinics workshops for them to join in, all right, to participate. So from there, we need some leads. The most important thing is the lead generations. So if you guys have leads of those who wants to participate, so that is when you can actually continue to engage them uh, despite their, maybe they are not participating, but at least when you keep on like, hey, come and join us, etc., they will know that you guys are existing. So I, I, I felt that that is the most important factor right now is to generate leads. So I think with all this information about them, one fine day, they will just fly back and fly in and then they will, we will, we will join the competition once everything is stable, right? So that's, that's my, my giveaway. <laughs> uh, Christian, if you don't mind, uh, just, just wanted to mention a bit of a comment about our event last year. Uh. Remember yes. last year's event? Okay, remember we actually tried to promote it to polytechnic students, yeah, to RP, yeah. to Singaporean yeah. youth, but we had only one person, only one, uh, one person signed up. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, tertiary. We only had one person sign up, one only. So she won, uh, okay? But nonetheless, um, why is it uh, that it is so difficult for us to, to, to um, incentivize local youth to, to take part in bodybuilding competitions, in, in fitness modeling competitions. Why is it so difficult? But yet, you know, when we reach out to international participants, no problem. We get people flying in from all over the world. Right. Why is that so? Overwhelming response from overseas, trying to even find out our event uh, and how they can possibly come in. But of course, being overseas, is, it's so much more harder for them to make it. But even then, right, our turn-up rate uh, is uh, 50%. is overseas, Malaysia, uh, Southeast Asia, even uh, Nepal, uh, Australia. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my, my, my take is that, um, number one, um, of course, if we have... Uh, values, the, the money that's being put, the mm. price money, I think definitely that's 100% people come in and, and, and compete with price money. So number two, nowadays with, due to social media, with social influencer, and a lot of the boys uh, who are very famous, or the ladies who are very famous, they are using steroids. That's the reason why you guys are different. That's mm. the reason why you guys are different because most of them, are, I mean like the competition itself, you, you can't use that substance, right? Yeah. So even Arnold Schwarzenegger actually take it. That's the truth. So that's the reason why influence their mind and they want to grow big and just be big that some point of time is insufficient for them. They just want to be like them. So how we can change the, uh, the knowledge, especially the, the environment of us yeah. so, uh, to make you guys are very, very unique, right? to say that no we stick to our belief that we want to have um, no steroids i mean steroids free okay because we want to practice all these positive side notes and we do not want to have any more of like boys and girls thinking that we should use drugs in order for any further enhancement so that's that's the reason why this price money and this social media influencer if they, they are keep on pushing on, on getting bigger and stuff like this, it's very hard. But as far as I'm concerned, I think if those guys who are naturally uh, built, right? Of course, they are, they are not as big as those people who use the gears mm-hmm. or the steroids or the, or the juice, what they call it in terms. So um, my, my take is that just stand firm, just stand firm on what we all believe in. Uh, we need to educate them. That's the most important part. Keep continuing to educate them. I think 
the 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 organizations and and the people who want to join in will will have many of that for sure. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, actually, we have we have uh, someone who would like to share a little bit of her insights, uh, Melanie. Um, so, if if you don't mind, uh, Melanie, you want to share a little um, bit about what you mentioned? One, uh, just a quick one, because Kaspani brought up a point about education, and I was wondering whether um, a lot of what has to we want to change in Singapore has a lot to do with the culture. Uh, you can say what you like about Singapore being at the crossroads, geopolitical crossroads, at the forefront of uh, globalization, blah, blah, blah. But we're still a very traditional culture. You only just have to listen to the political, political office holders speak about it. Um, and so you're fighting a cultural thing. So culturally, um, in the West, showing off your body, etc., is not a big issue. But traditionally, it's a very Eastern culture here. And it's a, very, it's a mix of very traditional Eastern cultures here. So I was wondering if your campaign could start to target the culture and the associations, your sport, as Kasbani has pointed out, um, you know, it's associated with steroid use and bulk, etc. But you may want to soften that image, the image alone, not soften the, the sport, but the association uh, with it. So you've got to really buy, you have to buy off parents, you have to get into the schools and make it very school friendly. Because I tell you with everything, right, it's the schools where you get the most um, uh, run with, you get the most traction with publicity, etc. If you're not in the schools and finding some way to popularize it, you have a big problem. Not a problem, but it's a big challenge. And then if you're not buying over parents, particularly with anything that's virtual and online these days, given the prevalence of cyberbullying, of pedophilia online, etc., uh, it's quite a challenge. So my perspective is that I would go that way. Yeah. So and, okay. and Kasbani is right about role models. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, MBFA, anything you wanted to respond to um, what, what Kasbani and, and um, Melanie have shared uh, on, yeah, on whether man. we can soften the image of bodybuilding in, in, in the local context? Great, great. You know what Melanie uh, just pointed is something that also we are trying to achieve, okay? To tell, let people uh, know and educate people know that bodybuilding is not just, just about, uh, yes, it does involve showing your body. Okay, uh, at the competition, but the whole process, 99% of it, you are actually doing behind ground, uh, uh, building a health, uh, building health and fitness, creating a healthy image for yourself. So it's, it's not uh, solely about seeing your own body on stage. Okay, the whole part is actually is still bodybuilding. And, and, and uh, about going to the school, yeah, I, I also fully agree that. And, and uh, I, this is where I hope. Uh, that we can uh, start young, let me start to incul uh, inculcate uh, the correct values on how uh, youth, children even, okay, they, they should uh, eat, moder uh, eat moderately, correctly, okay, uh, correct nutritional, nutritional profile, the right kind of uh, eating habits and uh, uh, physical activity, uh, a lifestyle where they also have proper rest and not play game all the way into the night, okay and have some uh, physical activity every day. It doesn't really have to be training. Of course, training is good okay, to, to, to uh, achieve certain goals, uh, which is, uh, but most important is how to stay active. And through all this, right, you will be building the body for health. Okay? And that is the first most important step. And yeah, so I, I, I hope we can also go in the direction in the future. Thank you. Christian, actually, I was just going to tell you that um, you, you, you have to start small and you have to start to buy in the parents first and have small little FGDs, dialogues, and buy in, and then show the connection between sport, not just bodybuilding, but sport and brain-based learning and how it's very good for the brain. And then you connect it to the academics and you've got your parents bought in. This, this is my thing. I think you need a brand ambassador. If you have a brand ambassador... That's Bani, that's you. Yeah, that's you, Kasbani. <laughs> You yeah, need yeah, a brand yeah. ambassador because with a brand ambassador and a touch with, with a social media platform and yeah. always throughout, always engaging with, with the, uh, the followers, probably like once a week, twice a week in a social media platform. Because in, in your, 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 your FB uh, fan page or whatsoever, right? If you keep on continuously or every day you try to engage, because why? Why? I mean, now in this generation, the youngsters that you want to engage, they are all on the phone all the time, all yeah. the time, right? So yeah. that's we, we need to start from there. So right. that's what how we can we can uh, get all these youngsters when they grow up, be a teenager or whatsoever. They try to be in that line, so everything will be realigned back. Mm. Yep. 
Yeah, uh, very, very interesting discussions. Thank you very much, Kasbani and, and all. Okay, um, we actually have one more last question for Deborah. So Deborah, we haven't forgotten you. So uh, who will be asking the question for Deborah? Anyone? Okay, then I'll, I'll ask the question. Okay, sure. Deborah, based on your research, what do you think what do you consider as the main reason for which the event did not meet its uh, desired aims? And what would you do if you are the organizer to make things right? Did you get the question, Deborah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I will talk about the uh, publicity part. Okay, uh, for the Kinder Spirit Virtual Challenge. Okay, so just now, uh, like what I have said, um, the cancellation of the one of the category, right, uh, was due to inadequate for me, uh, promotion to the various uh, uh, institute. So um, I think that um, because like most of their Publicity is through only the uh, EDM. That means like there's only uh, one way communication uh, where it's just like you are sending out a mailer or, or anything like that to them. So so it's like there's there's no like an interaction um, uh, between the the organizer and the the, the people that they want to uh, target. So um, my suggestion is maybe they could, uh, if I were the organizer, so maybe like um, we will go to the various school to do some road shows or some uh, fresh dance performance uh, and, then, and then try to engage the uh, the, the police, ITE students or even those youth that uh, I want to target, yeah, and then, yeah, have some interactions, uh, yeah, to, to better uh, publicize the event. Okay, uh, yeah, thank, thank you. Actually, this is also linked to what um, was mentioned just now, right, by Kasbani and all, having role models, going to the schools, doing road shows. So, Kasbani, are you interested in being the role model for uh, bodybuilding, uh, Christian? Take note of this guy. Maybe you want to uh, get him to be your next poster boy, uh, this guy here. All right. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, we are about seven minutes uh, beyond time, but I think it was a very good discussion. So thank you very much, NBFA, and um, for, for uh, coming in. Thank you, Green Team. Thank you for all your hard work. No? It's very good. Thank you. Thank you. So unlike last year, we can't have group photos with the various partners. So I guess uh, that's that's what we will do here. Okay, um, next we have Blue Team. Uh, before Blue Team comes up, I think I would like to uh, introduce the partners. So first, uh, hi, Andy from Hitmaker, right? Yeah, so yes. we have uh, Mr. Andy from Hitmaker. And um, would you like to share, is, is there anyone else from Hitmaker? Just yourself, right? Uh, just myself. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, Andy, would, I, would you like to share a little bit about Hitmaker to everyone here? Uh, yes. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, so basically, Hitmaker is uh, what we are doing is we are doing a lot, a, a lot on the uh, uh, revolu revolutionizing the uh, uh, music education uh, industry. So what we do is we integrate um, industry practice uh, on music especially the contemporary music arts um, into our education systems where we deliver a real, a real experience, practical kind of uh, learning with our students. So what we do here with um, a lot, a lot of uh, music institutions are doing uh, mostly on the performance education, but we do a lot on uh, the four main areas, which is uh, the creations of product and services, uh, mainly on the music production side. Um, here we do a lot of songwriting, so creations of uh, music projects with uh, a lot of uh, creative industry people, 
and uh, and then we move into what we call fame, which is on the uh, promotion and publication, social media marketing, and things like that, and uh, and then moving towards performance. So performance, I mean, we, we don't do just purely on performance. We do a lot of backstage work and live sound, live um, uh, light things, as well as the uh, on stage performing, which is um, mostly seen in a lot of conservatories. And we do entrepreneurship as well, so music business, and uh, moving students into uh, what we call learning in terms of music. So um, um, a lot of uh, music, uh, music um, business and industry, which is uh, going to go into uh, a lot of practical and creative industrial aspects. So we bring in a lot of uh, world-renowned uh, music producers, artists, like uh, you know, those who actually won Grammy Awards uh, in the world, like Miles Walker, John Raisin, and these are the people that uh, will actually be uh, part of the faculty to teach our, uh, our students on the uh, very practical aspect. So other than that, we do music events, uh, competitions, which is, I think, very rare, worldwide competition, both classical and pop as well. So that's about uh, chemical back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, let's... Uh, Dylan, you want to... Are you the... Is there anyone else from Urban Steps here? Or you want to share a little bit about Urban Steps to... To everyone? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, if, if to answer the earlier question, uh, there's one person from Urban Steps here, it's Miguel. Uh, he's up. Uh, but for the second question, I can uh, share for Urban Steps. So, Urban Steps is uh, our tagline is that we want to, uh, we are building families through dance. Uh, at Urban Steps, we always like to, to focus on nurturing character building in juniors, kids, teens, and so on and so forth. When we do so through the use of uh, stories, theology, lessons, and, and of course, dance. I think, I think uh, we, we also love to incorporate into our lessons creative and innovative learning tools that, that will enhance their academic skill sets and, and it will help to enhance their genre-based dance lessons as well. And, I think All right. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe Miguel. Okay, I think Miguel's video is not on. Uh, Miguel, you have anything you would like to say about Urban Steps? Uh, okay, no problem. Um, if not, then Blue Team, are you ready? Blue Team, please proceed to project your presentation and we will start whenever you are ready, Blue Team. Yeah, projecting. Uh, this channel here, I'm projecting uh, my screen. I hope you all can see it. Okay, Chen Wen, your voice is a little soft. Soft. Yeah. Is this better? A little bit better. If louder, yes. would be better. <laughs> okay, I try to be loud. La. Ah, this okay. is good. Okay. Hang on. Uh. Okay, Blue Thing, are we ready? <laughs> okay, once you're ready, I'll start the timer. Okay. Good morning, uh, classmates, our guests and partners from Urban Steps Academy and Heatmaker Global Academy. We, from the blue team, comprises of Janet, Adil, Melanie, and me, Chen Wen, would like to walk you through the presentation that we prepared for our specialized diploma project work. The contents that we have for our presentation total of six main points to touch on, with the last two on key improvement and key references. Do not worry, um, teammates and I will walk you through the presentation. Okay, what is the event about? We were introduced to two events related to dance. Firstly is the Kindred Spirit Virtual Challenge 2020. The next is the next Heatmaker Dance Competition. To create awareness on the mental health condition in society and to enhance mental resilience, confidence in sports performance using dance as a platform to interact during the COVID-19 situation. The first event is the Kindred Spirit Virtual Challenge Dance on the Youth Category. Two main phases uh, for this event. First phase is the registration upload of videos using TikTok uh, platform. The second phase comprises of the finals and grand finals. The grand finals was held on 1st August and live stream via Facebook. The second dance event that we were introduced to is the Heatmaker Dance Competition. 
it is a joint collaboration between RP, the Heatmaker Global Academy and Urban Steps Academy. The next Heatmaker Dance Competition supports the Beyond the Labor movement. Three main phases in this dance competition. The first phase is the online virtual learning environment. The second phase is the online competition. The online competition where 100 contestants will be participating through uh, Zoom and selected contestants will progress to the semi-finals. The third phase is the finals, uh, which will be held at the Republic Polytechnic Cultural Center tentatively, if everything goes smooth, to be held in January 2021. Identification of the priority population. We are looking at the mental health condition in society, focusing on the youth population. The youth are a vulnerable group where they face a lot of academic stress from demanding schoolwork and high expectation for parents. And when disagreement with parents could lead to family tension. In this COVID-19, where most of us are staying indoors, there's a lack of social connectivity, where the youth might feel uh, loneliness and some in a certain uh, degree depression. During the planning of a wellness program, we need to conduct the needs assessment. The needs assessment comprises of six steps. Okay, step one, to determine the purpose and scope. The purpose is to promote greater understanding of the mental health issue, to bring literacy, awareness, and reduce the social stigma of mental health. The participants are able to gain, to be aware of the mental conditions, and also to build the confidence, to, so, to have social connectivity during the circuit breaker. Step two of the needs assessment to gather data. We have uh, the second data here. It shows the chart of the comparison of the seven major mental disorder in uh, Singapore. So the study is a Singapore mental health study from 2016 and 2010. It's a comparison within the years. What we can see that there is an increasing, increasing trend of mental disorder. More people are diagnosed with mental disorder in 2016 compared to 2010. Third step of the needs assessment is to analyze the data. I would like to bring your focus on the recommended intervention. What we gather from uh, the articles that music therapy is able to improve social functioning and dance therapy is observed to have reduction in anger, depression, and negative symptoms, allowing expressing emotion through nonverbal body movements. Step four, we need to identify the risk factor. The risk factor are categorized in three categories, which is the psychology, biological, and sociological. After we list out this risk factor in these three categories, we prioritize them into a prioritized uh, matrix. So we need to focus on what risk factor we, we are more concerned with. After we result the three main uh, risk factor, it will become our problem focus. We are looking at the lack of social connectivity and the youth are always looking for group identity and the stigmatization of belief and expectation. Then we will use the precede proceed model to look at ways to tackle and handle the problem, to provide skills, having the ability to cope by creating awareness and education, and also provide accessibility to platform, virtual platform to encourage physical activity and to build confidence. Step six of the needs assessment is to validate the need. The feedback that we have from individuals that they feel confident from the dancing and feel that there's a social connectivity about the virtual event. And the dan and dancing allows expression uh, in motion through non-body mov body movements. I'll hand over to Jenna for his slides. Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, so I'll be actually going through the program administrative and the uh, return of investment or ROI. Okay, uh, next. Okay, so uh, for the program administrative dimensions, okay, there's three uh, categories. Okay, I, uh, first is activity, second will be the considerations, and the last will be expectations. Okay, as for the activity itself, okay, first, pre-planning for the event. So some of the considerations that were made are publicity, okay, the platform, okay, example, Zoom or maybe Facebook, okay, cost, budget, uh, and maybe recruitment of participants as well. Okay, and of course, the expectation was to have attractive prizes, uh, EDMs or electronic direct mails, Okay, social media advertising, 
uh, cost and budget allocation and proper usage of the online platform itself. Okay, next activity, okay, we're going to do the online platform, which is the Zoom itself. Okay, of course, the considerations were good and stable internet connection and the difficulty of using this platform. Okay, whether it's for participants, viewer, viewers or the admin, it should be easy to use. Okay, and as for the expectation is uh, reduced lag time and good flow of event. Okay, and easy quick changes of screen. So, for example, when using uh, when the, the changing the screen from judges to host or to participant, it should be quick and fast. Okay, next. Okay, and as for the program administrative dimensions again, okay, same uh, activity, okay, pre-planning for event, okay, this one will be under publicity, okay, publicity, some of the considerations are okay, various channels for advertising, okay, social media, websites, radio interview, and of course, attractive prizes, okay, this will attract more uh, participants. Okay, so the expectation is to monitor social media, website for data, and reach of different publicity channels. So by monitoring the data, you will know which uh, which channel works the best uh, and we can make changes before the event itself. Okay, and the prizes such as vouchers, resistant bands, okay, fitness course vouchers were presented as well. Okay, and as for the event day, okay, some consideration of course is to make the event itself fun and exciting for both supporters and participants. Okay, ensure the internet connection is at its best. Okay, and of course good teamwork among all organizers and volunteers. Okay, so the expectation is definitely to ensure the process is smooth, basically for enjoyment of the, of the event uh, by those who are all involved. Okay, next. Okay, so these are the legislative dimensions that uh, we could figure. Okay, so uh, also divided into three categories, legislation, considerations, and the concerns. Okay, so for the first legislation would be uh, under Compass. Okay, so uh, under Compass, you will need a music license in order to play uh, music, especially for TikTok. And so, uh, the consideration is, uh, like I said, music for TikTok dance videos. Okay, and the concern is uh, if you did not get this license and all, you can be under offence under the Copyright Act of Singapore 1987. Okay, and you can be liable to civil or criminal proceedings. Okay, next will be COVID-19. Okay, this whole uh, online thing is basically because of COVID-19. So, some of the considerations made are safe distancing and face masks. Okay, this might not apply to the participants, but uh, those who were at the office that day, uh, we had to maintain safe distancing and to be using their face mask. Okay, and by not doing so, okay, some of the concerns can be liable to fines or even prosecution. Okay, next. Okay, so this is the critical analysis of the logistic itself. Okay, so uh, divided to three parts, area identified, breakdown and possible solutions. Okay, so for the first part, internet connection. Okay, so uh, the breakdown of it is uh, basically there were certain connection issues. Okay, and a good possible solution for it is to get a portable internet router as a backup or because since the event itself there were many uh, rooms used okay, for judges, uh, for admin okay, so to get every room a uh, router if it's possible Okay, next would be prizes and publicity Okay, is uh, first thing first you have to promote the participation rate Okay, and there's a need for someone to monitor social media and actively promote sponsor feature posts Okay, so uh, solution is the prizes can be more attractive maybe to attract a uh, higher participation rate and to assign a dedicated person or ambassador to monitor the social media. Okay, next would be the production section, which is called Zoom DJ and MC. Okay, so I put it under other emergencies, okay, which includes uh, contingency plans. Okay, so very simple if there is no, uh, if, to always have a backup DJ or an MC and maybe a filler program in case uh, they, uh, there's an emergency. Uh. Okay, next. Okay, so this is the critical analysis of the manpower deployment. Okay, so the manpower, okay, we are for judges. Okay, so their roles and responsibilities, okay, the first thing is to clean scores for competitors, work under pressure to be swift and professional. Okay, so some of the solutions is uh, first thing first, always have a contingency. As uh, one of the judges also did not turn up during the event, okay, we had to activate uh, Judge Dylan, so which he did a commendable job at. Okay, next will be the admin. Okay, uh, admin itself, okay, uh, their roles, okay, to manage the event, switching cameras on and off during the event. Okay, and if the event is a major event, okay, uh, to have more than one main admin to make it easier. Okay, and always to ensure smooth flow of event and to rehearse with the participants beforehand. Okay, and uh, for DJs and MC, okay, uh, very simple, just music, okay, and always have a backup DJ or MC. Okay, next. Okay, so this is for the sponsorship itself. Okay, I uh, just listed out all the sponsorships over here, okay, which is in cash. Okay, next. So over here highlighted the green bar is okay, the total uh, sponsorship in cash, which is 2,530. Okay, next. 
here with expenses, okay, so uh, I've divided the expenses into logistics and prices. As for the logistics, okay, there are Facebook ads, Zoom applications, sponsor certs, okay, and transport and miscellaneous. So I just put all of it under logistics. And as for the prices, it can be the Ely International kits or uh, whatever the prices are of it. Okay, and uh, next. <coughs> Uh, next up and uh, one more time okay so this will be the total expenses uh before that uh, this is the total expenses of both logistic and prices uh which is 2009 okay, next slide okay so um based on the previous charts okay i put the sponsorship below okay the cost of event uh in the center which is the red one okay and using the sponsorship you minus off the cost of event okay you will get a positive balance of 520 dollars okay next Okay, so for the return of investment, okay, uh, basically what I did was sponsorship minus cost of event, okay, divided by the cost of event itself, and you have to test times 100 by it, okay, and you will get a return of investment of positive 25.89%. Okay, next. Okay, so I'll just hand over the uh, next slides over to uh, Mel. Thank you, Jennifer, and good morning to all. In doing the risk assessment of these two events, we identified um, in the next slide, you can see the hazards, we went through the flow. We assessed the risk level of these hazards that we have identified. We evaluated the existing control measures that were put into place to manage those risks. And we also suggested additional control measures to reduce or eliminate those risks. Next slide, please. Of the nine hazards categories you see uh, on the slide here, we focused our attention on the program activities and then identified three main hazards that we felt could affect the well being of the participants as well as the organizers. Next slide, please. Um, we used a severity and likelihood rating scales to arrive at an RPN, or what is known as a risk prioritization number. And that helps us advise organizers whether to continue with their planned activities, which is like green light you see in the, in the table below. Uh, proceed with caution, that means you take extra care and monitor and get management to um, be involved or don't proceed at all because it's way too dangerous. And you, and you can see that they are the three categories there. For the two dance events, we assess that the activities to be in the medium risk or tolerable range, thankfully. And we have suggested additional elimination and admin control measures as per the diagram on your right, our hierarchy of control, to keep within this range or even reduce it further. Next slide, please, Chairman. So moving on to the mechanical hazards and um, we rated this, uh, these have to do with environment, things in the environment that can cause injury or harm through impact or maybe not through impact. We gave it a medium uh, range rating, uh, a nine. Um, even with the existing control measures put into place about the safety advisory um, that was given to participants on how to create a safe space when you're doing your dance, we still felt that this is uh, quite possible to happen and could lead, because it's, the participants were given the option of doing it indoor or outdoor, um, there could be tripping hazards, uneven surfaces, crashing into furniture, tripping over wires, and bumping into sharp objects that could cause some um, injuries that would require more than just first aid, but medical attention and maybe a little bit um, uh, some disability involved. So we suggest, right, to keep it within this range or even reduce the risk even further, that the organizers might want to caveat or put in a rule that if the videos that they receive do not adhere to the safety protocol, they will not be considered at all. Also, to encourage in your safety advisory, a significant adult to be present to ensure that the environment is free from obstacles and safe for the activity to be carried out. Um, and the third thing that we want to, that I would like to uh, point out is that check the alignment between your safety message that you give out and any accompanying video that you, you, you send uh, after that. Let me show you what I mean in the next slide. So in this next slide, Chen Wen. Uh, you see that the safety instructions have been sent out um, really with good clarity because it's in 3D. You have a two meter by two meter space that they advocate to be free of any obstructing uh, objects that can cause injury. However, in the next slide, uh, Chen Wen, uh, the dance video that was sent out seemed to, to contradict all of this because if you look in the background of the dance instructor, you have uh, all the obstacles and stuff that could cause injury. Thankfully, no injury was uh, happened in this dance video. Uh, it may explain in the next uh, slide, Chen Wen, please. It may explain why the, the videos that the participants sent in in the final rounds, you'll find that um, they did not take the safety advisory to heart and there were all the potential for risk and injury. Um, thankfully, none occurred. So moving on to the ergonomic hazards. 
Um, we scored this uh, a rating of nine, again, putting it in the medium range. Um, and this, we felt, um, could be due to dance movements or techniques that may be incorrectly understood or executed, and that could result in muscular skeletal injuries. Um, the existing control measures put into place was a demo video, which was good, but there might be uh, participants who are inexperienced dancers or participants who are unfamiliar with dance terminology, jargon, and techniques that may not be able to perform the moves and the choreograph choreography to, um, to a particular standard. So we suggest, right, that if it's possible to include um, pre-dance tutorials, pre-dance sessions, Q&A sessions, um, video conferencing sessions for participants and dance instructors um, to showcase their moves and the dance instructors to give feedback. Uh, something like even dance mentors or dance buddies uh, from the organizer's perspective. In the last two slides have to do with the psychosocial hazards that we identified. And this one is a very real one because it is uh, quite prevalent in society. Harassment via cyberbullying, uh, there's ostracism, social isolation that could harm the mental health of your participants and also um, harm the reputation for the organizers should any of these incidents happen during the event. So we rated a little bit high uh, on the 10 side. And um, the, the existing control measures seem to be, seem to be uh, just relying on the personal resilience of the participants, family, and friends. We would suggest that um, organizers encrypt the videos to ensure its safety, um, deploy a trained personnel to filter comments and feedback during competition, this trained personnel to also be available to advise participants on various helplines or the appropriate authorities to contact should they encounter harassment online, or should they discover their inappropriate use of their videos? And finally, the last hazard of uh, psychosocial has to do with uh, any legal action that might be uh, occurring as a result of an injury. But we find that the existing control measures put in place by the organizers seem to be enough where they have obtained, given and obtained informed consent. What could help keep this rating at this level of six and even lower it perhaps is to have um, an added uh, Q&A session where parents, Participants could come in and um, be, get clarity over their legal rights um, and also safety advisory. Thank you very much. I'm going to hand off to Idol. All right, thank you. So next, we're talking about the evaluations. Next. So for evaluation, there's two contexts. Okay, so there's one uh, about process. Process explains about the data collection during program implementation. So you have inputs, activities, and outputs. Uh, for impact, we are talking about measuring the immediate effects coming out of the program. Okay, so basically what the participants learn, etc. So, so there's a knowledge, attitude, skills, and behavior next. Alright, so for process evaluation inputs, uh, we are talking about the resources being put in place in this project for Kindred Spirit. So there's personnel, equipment, venue, and partnership. So the most important context of it is knowing that this is a virtual activity. So we need to have a strong Wi-Fi. Okay, so um, the instruction material was given uh, well, uh, and um, the miscellaneous items are meant for those uh, for the finalists itself. Uh, venue, we are talking about the different online platforms. So we have Zoom talking about preliminary judging as well as the final competition itself. Uh, we have Facebook for live stream and TikTok for preliminary uh, submitting of videos. Then for the finale itself, uh, it's been done at a compound where all the judges will be over there. Uh, it will help at SLI. And uh, basically we have a partnership with Urban Steps uh, as a joint collaboration with the next Hitmaker project. Next please. All right, so for the activities, I'm going to break it down into preliminary and finale. So for preliminary, uh, in terms of time allotment, uh, participants give feedback that it, the duration of the submission of videos is pretty substantial. Uh, they are given enough time to submit. However, usually most of them submit closer to the end part of the, uh, the last day of the submission. Uh, for finale itself, uh, they are given, they are briefed to have 10 minutes of dance marathon. Uh, some of them find it too long, uh, others find it is fine. So what we can do in the future, you can just find the balance in between that maybe five minutes would do. And our program flow, we'll, we'll be talking about the publicity aspect. So basically for this competition, there's a low participation rate. Uh, I, do, I do, your time's up. I'll give you two more minutes to finish up. All right. So... 
uh, basically there's a low participation rate um, and there is no inclusion of prizes during publicity. So the radio interview itself is not that uh, substantial because uh, we are talking about youths, right? And youth doesn't have any, they don't actually listen to radio. Okay, it's a very bad platform for publicity in terms of in the youth aspect. So what they can do actually is they, they should have entered the schools, secondary schools for exposure. Uh, judging instruction, basically it's about, um, they are provided with the demo video mentioned by Mel. And uh, however, they are providing judging criteria. However, the judging criteria just give us the criterion and not the, uh, a specific rubric of what they're supposed to look at. Next, please. All right, so as you can see, what I talk about the low participation rate uh, for preliminaries, I have no data about this. Uh, as, but however, for the finale itself, um, there's only 12 participants and we have four withdrawals after, soon after. So I managed to talk to two of them. And um, two of them were saying that uh, they withdrew because of PDPA. All right, next. All right, so basically this is the impact evaluation. Uh, we are talking about the learning dance move. And basically uh, tips coming up uh, from the experts from the demo video itself. Uh, the judge also will, has given feedback for them, as well as they also learn from their player, peers as they are dancing. Okay, next. So for attitudes, uh, understanding the importance of dance, they understand that uh, it's really important for their uh, health and fitness, as well as it actually helps them mo uh, motivate, motivate them to train harder or better, to become better dancer in the future. Next. So basically for skill development from this competition itself, because there's always a change in the song, um, it actually helps them uh, choreograph better. Next. And uh, all of them are very keen in participating in future competitions as well as volunteering too. Next. So at the end of the day, um, we, the main improvement is basically the uh, publicity part as well as the prizes, it should be linked up so that the participation rate will go higher. All right, next. Next. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Could I trouble you to unshare? Thank you so much. All right. So we will now proceed to the question and answer. Um, Andy, would you be able to ask the, the two questions to... Do you have All right, to yes, um, uh, uh, wow. uh, let me uh, show you my background uh, because I'm outside, so <laughs> noisy here. Yep. Okay, you want to ask to Chen Wen, right? Chen Wen, yeah. All right. So, um, so the question is like, uh, in your opinion. How, do, how appropriate do you, do you think of, um, the intervention of using TikTok also in uh, on the dance base intervention as a uh, youth target from the age of 12 to 17 years old? Uh, the TikTok platform, I think, is more uh, reachable to the youth uh, compared to adults uh, because, like, for us, uh, we don't use we seldom use TikTok as the platform to socialize or to reach out to people. So for the youth, uh, I guess uh, TikTok uh, application or, uh, as a way to reach out to uh, the rest is uh, is fine. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, yeah, because uh, for uh, like for us working adults, we seldom use TikTok. So for the youth, uh, for I think for the feedback from them, they they are able to use it uh, quite. Uh, well, uh, able to upload the videos and uh, to use some effects uh, to TikTok to uh, register for the competition. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the underlying health um, and the mental messages that we are trying to you know, surface to the youth, especially, so do you think it is appropriate to propagate the whole um, uh, using the, the TikTok and the info? 
um, for the proportion of the event itself. We think it's, it is sufficient or appropriate for them to use that portal. Uh, sufficient wise, I think the youth, uh, mainly they want uh, recognition and able to uh, reach out to their friends uh, during uh, like a form of through some activity like dancing. So using uh, TikTok or any other social platform to able to reach out to their friends to do something common, I think is uh, yeah, I think it's okay for them. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you very much, Chairman, for your response. Okay, um, so, uh, Andy, you want to ask the next question to um, Jenna? The second question. Um, all right, Jenna. So my question is that what would you consider to be the most important aspect uh, of the program administration, which you think we should invest in most? in order to ensure the success of the program. Okay, thank you. Can you repeat the question again? Sorry. Enough, you got the, do you, do you have the question? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, the uh, question, you got it? I didn't get, I didn't get it. Okay, I'll ask again. So what will you consider to be the most important aspect of the program administration, right? Uh, we should think we should invest more in to make the event a success. Okay. Uh, basically, I think for admin side, I think the best would be is for publicity. Um, because for publicity, first thing first, the prizes should be more attractive in a sense. Okay, maybe lucky draws or maybe even audience participation uh, prizes also could be implemented. Okay, this would definitely uh, attract more people. Okay, even audience who want to watch the show, also they have something to do. They have something to participate in. So which makes it more interesting for them. Uh, that's one thing. Okay, of course, then uh, advertising or publicity through social media. Okay, EDM and maybe radio interview might not be the most uh, the, the most that it will reach because not many people are actually reading their emails or maybe even listening to radio. Okay, so uh, yes, more social media or maybe even TikTok advertisements could be a bit more uh, visible uh, so that, that uh, more people can see and more people can uh, join. As well, so that would definitely ensure that there is a more success in this event, and of course, more increased participation rate. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, enough, and thank you, Andy, for asking the questions. Uh, I'll now hand over to Dylan from Urban Steps to ask the next few questions. Hi, my first question is for Adil. Adil, uh, streaming music and and motion like dance movements is always a challenge on non-broadcasting online platforms so what other methods or concepts would you introduce to upkeep a professional standard of event experience i think i think it's true yeah i think most most of the participants were saying as well because when you are doing uh, all this zoom there will always be a delay and the transition when they are hearing the song itself there's gonna uh, when we as judges when we look at it there's going to be a slight delay. So the fluidity of the movement is going to be affected. So ultimately, I think the best way, the best way is for them is to submit during their preliminaries. Uh, if, you are, if you have watched the preliminaries, basically they are just dancing through their own self. Then you're just recording like that. And then that will actually show the fluidity and all the correct movement, body movement itself. And then uh, that is where we as judges, when we look at it, it's much more accurate compared to actually streaming it live because it will affect their performance itself. Thank you. Thank you, Ideal. Uh, Dylan, you want to ask the next question to Melanie? Yes. Hi, Melanie. Uh, Hi. My question for you. Dance has always been uh, seen as more of a performance art rather mm -hmm. than an uh, approach to addressing mental wellness. So, however, studies have shown that, that uh, dance together with music has great impact on our emotional well-being. So how can this significance be educated to the next generation of students and adults so that it becomes part of their daily lifestyle? 
Well, I think the first step has already been taken by your academy and um, even the next hit maker because you are making it public and you're showing as far as possible a very positive side to it and the positive influences. So that's already capturing um, uh, the attention of uh, a general population. As I am always a, a big advocate and fan of going into the schools and making dance and music part and parcel of a holistic education because dance and music, as you, as you so rightly pointed out, um, there, there are parts of the brain where it resides and it helps with emotions. And you know, the research uh, says it there. So um, I, would, I would definitely, if you can't get into the schools, uh, that is the population or the age group that we should target through, you know, when they come out to have um, extra, extra lessons, uh, supplementary work, or just um, enhancing their lifestyle with their parents. So that's the, that, those are the, the kids to target. But in the schools, it's already taking on. Um, what dance, what Urban Steps and Next Hitmaker are doing are actually you're on the right track. You're making a very positive experience. I would suggest if, and I think some of the steps are being taken, if parents and family can be involved. So rather than have an individual competition, uh, branch out and have a family competition. Uh, and so in, especially in this age where there is, um, you have to do everything online, virtual. Once you get the family involved and you show them that there's nothing to be afraid of, anything online and virtual, especially the parents who are so wary of all of this, I think you are going to make tremendous steps in this area. Um, a good thing to do is also to have a seminar where you bring in, um, you do dance and as part of your dance event, a seminar where you bring in dance experts, brain learning experts, educationists, educational psychologists, and you throw it out there. You throw this issue out there and people come together and have a discussion. And always, always engage parents. The more information you give parents, contrary to what people believe, the more information you give parents, the more enlightened they are, the more you're better to buy, uh, you're able to buy them into your, your perspective, your concept, etc. That would be my take on this. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Melanie. Um, Dylan, there are a couple more questions. I suggest you open it to the blue team. You want to just ask the questions and whoever from blue team you want to answer please go ahead okay right. my first question right how how do the statistics uh, that you've already shown or uh, can be outside statistics uh, are there any indicators that reflect the impact of COVID-19 on on the mental health of Singapore Singaporeans and just anyone in general um, I'm going to jump in and say this morning's Straits Times, I haven't had a, an opportunity to read it, but they did talk about that there's going to be an effect on the mental health of Singaporeans as a result of COVID-19. I didn't have a chance because I was preparing for this um, to read it, but I, I'll go back and look at the stats and, and point everyone in that direction it's in the Straits Times this morning as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we might see more info on this in the next presentations from the red team. But uh, yeah, no problem. Anyway, uh, Dylan, your second question. Yes, my second question. Okay. So uh, earlier you, sh you showed us the, the, the return of investments, right? Uh, uh, could you please describe to me the timeline of the return of investments? Uh, uh, when, when, around when will I uh, see all these, all these returns as well as all the e other events uh, related to the mm -hmm. ROI? Uh, basically, the return of investment, I got it from the uh, after action review. Okay, so it, uh, it of course considers uh, before the event, all the miscellaneous stuff, transport, it can be a lot of things. So it starts way before the event and throughout the event. And after once everything is done, it compiled into a data sheet. And from there, I extracted it into this graph and uh, compute the return of investment. Does that answer your question? Uh, the Will will this uh, be will these events occur within the year or is it like uh, after of next year or following year? Uh, so uh, Dylan, you're asking how soon can we expect to see like for example a break even or something along those lines, right? Is that yes, what yes. you're asking? Okay, yes. enough. You want to uh, weigh in on that based on what you did for the ROI? How soon do you think uh, we can break even for this kind of events or attain a profit? Okay, uh, in terms, break even as in, in terms of? In terms of our investments, in terms of our expenditure versus what we, what we gain. Uh, okay, so, uh, sponsorships, uh, fees and so on. 
definitely okay uh if you're thinking of it in terms of the chart itself it's a positive balance okay which is a good thing which means our expenses are way lesser than the uh than the sponsor sponsorship itself okay so of course a better way to maybe increase this uh roi is of course to have less expenditure okay and maybe trying to get more sponsors to sponsor for this event which means we also can have a more bigger more uh slightly better event as well yeah yeah, yeah i would like to add in also yeah from a project, yeah for a project management point of view the break even we will look at uh two uh, two uh, points are uh, incoming are going so if your incoming is fixed like or is it a progressive uh, incoming kind of figure and you're outgoing when can you uh, know that your outgoing will be uh, freeze there or stop so then we can know whether uh, the break even point is which uh, which time frame that we're looking at if you're looking at the end of the project where everything freeze then we know okay we have a positive balance or negative balance so if your whole project stretches one year or two years, then you have to look at the whole time frame of the project. So the best or uh, looking at the whole project, uh, winning the less than one year, of course, you will have a lesser monitoring. But if you uh, stretch to two years, it will be a bit tougher and more monitoring or uh, is needed uh, to track your progress on a money basis, I would say. So break even, not usually from a project management point of view, we would monitor bi-weekly every two weeks and also uh, at the uh, the end of the project i would say because uh, the the money monetary uh, figure is quite sensitive uh. mm. and dylan may i add to your question about um how does it become part of their daily lifestyle i think in the schools it's already started as part of the pe and health program um to and pe art music health program to uh, make it part of a, a, a child's uh, lifestyle. But with the parents, I do see that Sport SG, uh, Active SG is the way to go because they're trying to inculcate more family-friendly, more family-inclusive activities. So getting dance and music in, I do see that these are part of their program as well. So we're, all, we're on the right track. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Miguel, hi. I see you are back. Hi, hi. Uh, anything you want to hi. say to to end off the, the, this session? Um, actually, um, uh, Dylan has already posted uh, all the questions, communicating with him on WhatsApp. So, uh, okay. Apologize for the inconvenience and thank you. No problem, no problem. But thanks so much for coming. Or, um, thanks a lot for, for coming down for this presentation. And thanks to the blue team as well. So now we'll be moving on to the uh, final presentation. Um, we have got, I think the guests are here. We have got Josephine from IMH. So our red team, yes, you can start to project in full screen. Um, okay, let me just identify the guests here. We have got Josephine from IMH. We have got um, Margaret, Margaret from IMH too. Is this uh, Miss Margaret Hendricks? Yes. Oh, yes, hi, welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming by. Thank you, thank you so much. No hi, hi, Margaret. Long time no see. Okay, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and um, we also have from Clarity Singapore, we have got uh, Rebecca and Jolene. Right, so let me see who else. Okay, and yes, and so later on, there's also one more question which will be posed on the Kindred Spirit Senior category. So I think, uh, Robert, Robert, are you able to address that question later? Mr. Robert yes. Tai? Okay, yes, awesome. So. Okay, Ken. So Robert is a psychologist. Um, Robert, you want to share a little bit about, about what you do? Sure. Um, well, um, I have been doing uh, uh, psychotherapy for, for um, for all my uh, uh, clients for, for the last 10 years uh, and I've moved into sports psychology recently uh, with SLI and Zoom and uh, just enjoy myself. <laughs> Thank so, you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, okay, maybe later on uh, we'll get everyone to introduce yourself. So now let's give the time to Red Team. So Red Team, when you're ready, you may proceed with your presentation. Thank you, Aaron. 
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ruth Lim, and there are four members in our team. So each of us will be speaking about a particular project. Lakesh will start off first. He's going to talk about the psychoeducation. This is followed by Waiman. Waiman is going to talk about the webinar on developing mental resilience in the age of COVID-19. Third speaker would be Shakira. Shakira will be discussing about the off-center play, which is by the necessary stage. And I will finally wrap it up with uh, a discussion on the series, um, the Kindred uh, Spirit series uh, on, the, on the seniors. Okay, so take it away, Lakesh. Hey, could I trouble you to full screen? Show your slides in full screen, please. Okay. Hello, hi. Can everybody hear me? Hello, hi. Can everybody hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you, Lakesh. Hi, uh, good morning, guys. Uh, I'm Lakesh here. All right, uh, today I'm going to actually talk about the uh, Bloom project, actually, which is conducted by Clarity. The whole idea of this project is actually to create awareness about mental health well being and also to help people cope with stress management and also understand the importance of self care. Next slide, Luke. Uh, next, okay. So the purpose of the scope is actually to identify own current health mental state and also to recognize areas which they need more focus on their stress which they are facing. So by that, they actually did a data collection by putting up questionnaires uh, 1 to 10 of uh, asking them to rate their uh, stress level and also self-care quizzes to understand their own self better, which you can see on the right there image. So upon data collection, there's also uh, giving out suggestions how to use uh, their own strength to actually overcome, stre uh, overcome stress and also put in their reflection wall to do a self-reflection. Uh, next slide. Okay. Rakesh, can I hear you? Hello, yep, can you hear me? Yeah, so um, the risk factor problem will be actually people uh, facing a cardiovascular disease, anxiety and depression. So identifying the problem focus will be actually people feeling stress, that which will be the predisposing factor. And the solution will be actually by uh, cultivating stress relief techniques and self-care plan, like doing uh, breathing exercises, meditation, and the validating the need will be actually teaching participants how to use a Google Calendar to actually plan out a self-care activity for the first week. Uh, next slide, Luke. Okay, so the hazard will be actually a psychosocial hazard for the risk assessment management. Um, over here, I would like to actually highlight about uh, some of the uh, things which will be a EHS consequences impact. So one will be actually coach unable to fulfill uh, certain questionnaires because some of the questionnaires which are actually very default and participants may have uh, different questions which they are facing or some of the questions uh, coaches will not be able to answer. And then um, rather than having it in a big group, I would suggest this having it in a very small group for the Q&A. And another one is uh, participants actually having a emotional breakdown because not everybody would want to actually kind of open up about their emotions where one of the platform which they are actually currently using it is the Padlet where everybody actually kind of can see what is their emotions and everything it is about. All right, so next slide, Ruth. So, the activities, so this uh, session is actually kind of conducted in STOM, uh, SCOM. It's eight sessions and every section, they actually kind of got an introduction video, questionnaires, uh, engaging participants to, of course, use padlets to share their emotions and TikTok challenge videos, which you can see, like to share their favorite activities to deviate their attention from stress, like uh, using workouts, reading books, stories, you know, and also breathing, uh, breathing, breathing exercises. Okay, and the output will of course 
Will the audience have uh, increased knowledge in mental health well-being, learning new techniques to cope with stress, and reduce percentage of people feeling stress? All right, next one. Um, for the knowledge, suggestion of self-care activities and stress relief techniques to adopt, and attitude will be, of course, people to have more discipline to cope up with stress management. And for skills, not everybody will actually know how to identify whether they are stressed or not. So by attending this program, they actually will know how to identify how, whether they are stressed or not. And for the behavior, they actually have this thing called emo thermometer to actually kind of write down how stressed they are and using that as a gauge for the clarity members to identify their current emotions. Next. And uh, this is the references which actually I took from the Clarity website about the uh, Bloom project, which is the eighth session, and then for my needs assessment. And from here, I would like to end my presentation and also uh, hand over to Aima. Thank you. Thank you, Lakesh. Can everyone hear me? Can I just check if anyone can hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so my name is Aiman. I'll be looking at the, the webinar um, which is on developing mental resilience in the age of COVID-19. So this webinar is part of the health advocacy webinar series. And as I said, it's focused on mental resilience. A uh, quick summary of how the whole webinar was conducted. There's a sign up link that was sent to participants, which included a pre-event survey. Um, guest speakers were invited from Institute of Mental Health. Um, the webinar was conducted on Microsoft Teams by the platform and then also post-event survey that was sent out. Next slide. Um, so while doing a needs assessment, so we found out that the stats were staggering, right? So um, at least one death per day and 40% of people, uh, people that are aged 18 years and above or have expect anxiety. Um, even, though, even as well as during the COVID-19 period, there have been studies that found that youth has you know, um, struggled with loneliness, boredom and isolation, and of course, there's a potential disconnect from society, which is why the priority population tends to be the We decided the priority population to be youth and uh, young adults. Um, the, as part of this assessment as well, um, we, the, uh, while undergoing the pre, while we gathering data from the pre-event survey, 40% um, actually displayed uh, signs of stress, 30% displayed signs of anxiety, and only like 30.5% actually um, had uh, responded with high resilience, which kind of highlights the need to address this um, topic of uh, mental resilience. Next slide. Um, so even though if we use a, a BPR model, the, skies would, the scores weren't very high, 50% of them responded positively to an online engagement. Uh, even though there was also a lack of studies on a blended therapy, which is a combined of face-to-face -face and online therapy. COVID-19 doesn't really allow for therapies to have any, uh, current therapies to have any um, physical interaction, which is why I think uh, we decided to still go ahead with this uh, webinar. Next slide. Um, so, um, while assessing the risks of um, conducting an online webinar, really the only two things that we, our, I would focus on, which is the psychosocial hazard, possibility of a webinar getting hijacked and type of the bullying to occur. And of course, being held online, of course, there will be, there will be this, definitely a risk of uh, IT or technical issues. Thanks. Um, so now we look at evaluating the event, right? So the, some of the good indicators involved um, were the relevance of the content, so feedback was good on that. Um, and engagement levels, engagement levels as well uh, was a good indicator. What we, what I felt didn't go too well were the technical issues. Uh, there was an issue of slide control, um, which kind of slowed the flow of the entire webinar. Right, next slide. If we um, just to continue on the evaluation, um, majority of them felt that they gained gain knowledge on the importance of developing mental resilience as well as realizing the importance of dealing with mental resilience. However, there wasn't as much information based on the feedback given on how about to go about developing this mental resilience, a lot of the feedback was just, a lot of the content of the webinar was general advice. Um, in terms of behavioral change, um, there wasn't any question in the post-event survey to kind of address whether or not there was any behavioral change, but um, one feedback did mention that they will attend a future event. Next slide. Um, yeah, so mental resilience is, is a topic that's close to my heart. So therefore, I will give, I'll give some suggestions moving forward. So we conduct a, uh, the same similar pre-event survey as a post-event survey, which has all the three um, um, kind of important um, mental health surveys, which is the GHQ, the GAD, and the BRS. 
uh, and to also involve parents and guardians if the priority population were to maintain to be uh, with use. All right. Um, so next up, we will have Shakira who will talk about the off stage, uh, off center stage play. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So hi guys. Uh, I'm Shakira. So I'm going to share with you guys about uh, stage play off center. So basically, this performance is about uh, two individuals that are encountering with their mental health issues. So uh, the performance was supposed to be held at RP Theatre, but due to COVID, it was uh, held at Singapore Theatre instead. And the stage play performance was uh, actually they collab with the necessary stage and as well as the Singapore Theatre to conduct this performance. And this performance actually uh, uh, involved the youth mental health issue like insecure, anxiety, and as well as depression. Next. So uh, I'm going to talk about the identification and priority population and its assessment. So for the priority population, we'll be focusing on the youth because uh, mental health issue can start as early as age of 20 years old. And what are the needs of the priority population? It's actually covering the issues of the individuals and communities have brought to the authorities uh, regarding these uh, mental health issues. And for me, the subgroups that uh, need greater needs are actually the youth and the seniors. And what is currently being done to identify the uh, identify the needs? So uh, now um, most of the communities have actually raised awareness on mental health issues, like conducting programs, uh, workshops uh, regarding the depressions, and also help the audiences to understand how we should react and treat the person with, uh, that are having issues with depression. Next. So uh, for the program administratives and the, uh, such as logistics and manpower, so for the logistics, uh, actually the stage play and SP Theatre, they actually uh, sponsor and their own equipment such as sound system, uh, lights, camera and even the venue to record the performance itself. Next. So the risk assessment and management of key aspects of the event. So the hazard identification, uh, there are physical hazards, psychosocial hazard and uh, viruses, but the severity and the likelihood will be rare. Next. So these are the process and impact evaluation of the implemented program. For the process input, it was uh, actually Facebook Live and the performance itself at the venue was actually pre-recorded due to COVID-19. And for the live Facebook, it was actually for everyone to watch it, those who didn't get to attend the performance. And the activities, the total time was 2 hours 32 minutes. The performance was smooth, there were no hiccups, and it was good introduction brought up by the youth. And the output, there were zero accidents. And for the impact, the knowledge, the importance of ensuring quality evaluation, because uh, we need to value the performance and make sure there are reasonable results. And for the skills, ident ability to identify key movement indicators for downgrade, uh, no, because the performance was smooth. And for the attitudes, for the audiences, change in mindset, the audience will uh, actually have better ideas about mental health issue and what they should do to depression people. And suggestion, uh, next. Uh, yeah, suggestion for the improvement program in subsequent run. In my opinion, the stage play was uh, excellent because uh, actually it shows cater to youth and also for everyone to understand more about mental health issue and how they should uh, treat uh, people with depression. And however, the improvement in the future, I would say you guys might want to include the unemployment rates of students and adults because they are also uh, struggling to get jobs and how they can get, how can they encounter and get over this. Next. And these are the two references that I use to evaluate the event. And now I will pass it to Ruth, my group leader. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Shakira. So I'm now speaking about the uh, Kindred Spirits uh, Virtual Challenge for the Seniors category. So first and foremost, some quick background. This event is organized by Club Zoom in collaboration with uh, Talk of War Singapore, ITE as well as Republic Poly. And this is the seventh time that this event is run on an annual basis. However, this year is the first time it is run on a virtual basis, thanks or no thanks to COVID-19. 
So there are a number of categories uh, in total, and I'm zeroing in on the seniors category. This is promoted via various uh, social media platform, as well as some of the more traditional platforms as well. There are many, many resources being harnessed in organizing this event because I had uh, listened in to some of the recording of the meetings that have been held. And I can sense that, you know, there are many, many people uh, and resources and logistics and coordination that's been involved. Now let's talk about the needs assessment or rather why are we having this event? So with the COVID-19 outbreak, there is increased stress because of uncertainty. People are uncertain as to when COVID-19 will be over. People are also uncertain about uh, employment prospects. Some may have personal, marital or family issues as they are cooked up at home. And they're also worried about, you know, money matters. So the benefits of this uh, Kindred Spirit Virtual Challenge are multifold. First and foremost, it helps to promote the sense of being together and uh, it helps to lift spirits because it's like one kindred, kindred uh, community. It also helps to showcase athletic abilities that uh, being old or older does not mean being unfit. Um, it gives everyone a sense of purpose. Athletes, uh, the seniors, the coaches, everyone that's involved. And I think it also helps the students gain work experience, especially in a time where internship opportunities may be scarce. They can always cite this as good work experience in future to employers. And it of course supports businesses and coaches uh, whose businesses uh, may be impacted because of safe distancing and especially during the circuit breaker period. And overall, it really contributes to corporate social responsibility. So for the seniors category, there are two rounds. The preliminary round, which is from the 5th to the 24th of July, followed by the finals on the 1st of August. And um, the seniors are, are, are classified as people who are age 55 and above. They're supposed to sit and stand for 45 seconds and count the number of times they're able to do so. In the finals, they will still do the same sit-stand challenge, and it is also accompanied by a dance uh, to music. Now, the risk assessment, uh, I have uh, identified two potential categories, and in both cases, I think the likelihood of uh, something very adverse happening is low. First, in terms of falls, sprains, or strains, the instructions are given very clearly right? Uh, two meter clear space, no sharp objects and so on. And in terms of any adverse cardiac events, this is also likely to be low because the challenge is of very low or moderate intensity. The contestants can always stop if they're feeling unwell because they are doing it in the comfort of their own home. And more importantly is there is a liability disclaimer that is given to all the registered participants. Evaluation. Now, I had a uh, chat with the overall uh, winner, as well as the only female uh, finalist, and both of them had very, very positive feedback on the event. Okay, the feedback is given here. I shall not uh, read it out. You can see it for yourself. I have uh, some uh, suggestions for uh, consideration for future events if we do hold it on a virtual basis again. I think uh, for the uploading and the submission of the videos, Facebook is a good platform, but not all seniors are social media savvy. So perhaps having a phone line to help these seniors might be useful. Now the chair that was used as a prop, I believe in the video is mentioned, you know, in the, in the demo video, it was mentioned that the chair should be 47 cm height. I think if we simply say that it's a dining chair, it may be more straightforward because some people's chairs may be a little bit higher or some may be a little bit lower. Uh, the timing of the event. For the finals, the actual event happened about 30 minutes ahead of schedule. So probably if it, is, uh, if it happens closer to the time 
uh, schedule, it might be better because the seniors might be more prepared. The music that was used for the dance segment, I noticed that it was some uh, Chinese music, yeah, if, if, I, if I didn't hear it wrongly. And I think if this event is uh, for all uh, participants of uh, different nationalities, uh, different races, different uh, geographical locations and so on, it might be better to use like more international English music. Now, um, and finally, in terms of the clarity of the instructions, I think it would be great if, you know, uh, there is uh, clearer instructions because when I watched the uh, uh, finals, I noticed that uh, when the music was played and, you know, the robots started dancing, I think some of these uh, finalists were quite unsure as to what they're supposed to do. And eventually, a lady, uh, uh, you know, told them that uh, they're supposed to dance the music. However, in, uh, in, in, in totality, I would say that this event was really a resounding success because everyone enjoyed themselves. And it's a really great opportunity for them to put aside whatever worries that they have about COVID and join uh, uh, other participants as part of a community of uh, kindred spirits. And in fact, uh, from one of the, of the finalists, he had, uh, through this event, also linked up with Club Zoom to promote another event that's related to cancer uh, sponsorship. So there are positive spin-offs as well. Now, these are the references that I had uh, read through uh, to come up with uh, these slides. And with that, uh, the RAID team, thank you for your, um, uh, well, for, your, for listening to us, especially when we are the last uh, group, you know, you must be quite tired by now. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, RAID team. Thank you, Ruth, and thank you, everyone. Okay, so before we proceed with the question and answer, um, I would like to feature our partners who are here. So I will start first with um, Clarity. So maybe I will just spotlight uh, Rebecca and Jolene later. Um, would you like to share a little bit about what you do at Clarity and a few things about the organization for everyone's benefit? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, Lakesh. Thanks for your presentation. Yep. Um, right. So, Jolene and myself, we come from Clarity Singapore. We are a Catholic community mental health agency uh, located largely at Yishun, Topayo, and Mount Avenue Hospital. So, we work with individuals aged uh, 18 to 65 um, at risk of or diagnosed with mental health conditions through psychotherapy uh, or group or workshops programs um, that is housed internally. So what happened was, uh, what Lakesh did was actually, uh, because of COVID, we actually run this uh, Bloom program targeted for youth mental wellness. So we actually kind of bring this program virtually, yeah, for our clients or for public or youth who are interested to actually attend this uh, workshop. So we kind of adapted it and bring it online. So uh, yeah. So this program is actually for youth aged 17 to 24 at the moment. And we have been running it uh, using Zoom at the moment. Uh, so this time around, I think what Lakesh did is uh, we actually adapted using another platform. Mm. Asynchronous, yeah. it's an asynchronous mode. Correct. Thank you. Correct. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Jolene, mm. would you like to share a little bit more about uh, what you do at Clarity for everyone? Yep. Hi, everyone. So in Clarity, um, I'm in the same here as Rebecca. So mainly I run programs and workshops. So recently we've had several runs of our online workshops on different topics, so such as obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, depression, authenticity. Then aside from that, I also manage our social media accounts. So feel free to follow us if you guys would like. So Facebook, Clarity SG, Instagram, The Yes Initiative. Thank you very much. Um, I would now like to move on. Uh, Margaret, if you don't mind, uh, maybe I just uh, wanted to talk to you a little. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, would you like to uh, introduce yourself to all of the participants here? Because um, we all know that you're a legend over at IMH, so maybe share a little bit more about uh, your background. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, well, the word legend is um, sometimes very, very, um, very good and sometimes may not be. All right. A anyway, um, I like to say that uh, first and foremost, uh, this relationship with uh, RP 
has uh, been uh, quite a while and uh, we have uh, in the process not only work uh, with uh, your splendid team but also with uh, other teams in RP and uh, certainly uh, we have uh, uh, gone quite far uh, in uh, many of the projects especially with you uh, so many of the uh, physical exercises uh, involving our patients but most, mostly it's concentrated on the well development of the, of the patients but um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, um, what we did uh, in, in, uh, in, in the earlier part of this uh, uh, COVID was uh, the, um, uh, uh, how to actually help uh, the students, right? And, and uh, everybody else in RP uh, in issues concerning uh, mm -hmm. mental well-being. And uh, that's when we got involved, our top management people, and they were very pleased to be involved in it. Uh, we are continuing this relationship. Uh, our, our, my role is uh, actually mostly the uh, you term as in the local language capo of uh, linking you up uh, with the relevant parties and trying to support wherever I can uh, and with Josephine too. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Thank you, Margaret. So, um, in response to your your, your statement just now, no legend is always positive in your case and we are very appreciative for all of your help. It is not KFO, it is certainly very uh, positive uh, inputs onto all of the programs. Um, I'm wondering, Benjamin is here, right, Benjamin? Uh, I think uh, eh, Benjamin is here. Is um, Josephine here? Okay, am yes, I? I'm uh, oh, hi, Benjamin, hi, hi. Benjamin, yes. you want to say some to to the to the audience out there to the crowd okay i think um yeah i think the relationship between rp and imh huh, is uh, i think it's uh it's fairly new all right yeah although we have been working together for a few years all right but then i also wish that you know this relationship will continue lah, right between us to you know to for the benefit of the the students okay and the benefit of the our patients and is there's a, always a good collaboration and learning points coming out from uh, any activities and or any collaboration together lah. all right and then as what margaret mentioned okay our senior management is so very pleased on all the activities uh being organized lah, so far yeah, thank, thanks a lot, um, Benjamin, for your support. So we 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 are also in the midst of uh, planning a Christmas program, right? Together. Mm, yes. So correct. I think uh, maybe we we will we will uh, we are doing it online in the spirit of everything else that's happening. So it's, we are going to do something new, lah, an online Christmas party. So yes. that's something that's in the works, lah. Uh, mm, thank you yes. very much, Benjamin. Uh, Josephine, you are you? Would you like? Josephine. I want to say a few words. Yeah. <laughs> hi, uh, hi everyone. I'm Josephine. Uh, we are all from the same team, like Margaret and Benjamin. So, uh, as they have mentioned earlier, yeah, we have been working for uh, quite a while on several projects as well, uh, mainly with students and um, as well as with the patients. Lah. So it has been fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Josephine. And uh, certainly, we've we've certainly enjoyed working with uh, CMU. So, um, in addition, right, we also have uh, Robert. So, Robert, you introduced a little bit just now, uh, who is a um, psychotherapist, right, Robert? Yeah, so, so uh, yes. we'll also be inviting you to give your inputs uh, uh, later on. And Ren, the chief judge, is also back to pose some questions, particularly about the final uh, event uh, to Roof. So, Roof, get ready to be drilled by Ren, the chief judge. So um, let's just start with the first questions. Maybe um, I will hand over to Clarity. Uh, you want to uh, post your questions, anything to our students who presented? Hi, Lakesh. Um, I just, uh, thank you for the presentation. I really want to find out um, the effectiveness of such virtual mental wellness programs for youth. Um, so do you have any thoughts about, you know, how effective do you think this kind of uh, virtual mental wellness program will be suitable for you? Um, okay, uh, first and foremost, I would like to tell, okay, definitely this will be a great impact for a lot of youth uh, because 
currently, um, a lot of uh, youths are actually facing lots of stress and does not know how to actually focus on uh, how to say, keep themselves, uh, I mean, show their stress in a positive way, you know, like cultivate habits like um, good habit, healthy habits like working out or anything like that. So, um, one of your event which actually I think is, is a, which is a, will be a very great help for student, uh, students to identify it will be for the youth will be how to use their own strength to actually identify and cope with stress management. So I think that will be a very good pointers and a helpful point for students to overcome stress and yep, that's about it. Thank you. Any, any other questions from Clarity? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Your answer, Lakesh. Um, I'm I'm so curious. Like you know, um, because this is a virtual program, right? Do you have any suggestions on how we can actually improve the participations of this program? Uh, okay. So since uh, what I would suggest is since uh, initially I was aware that this program was going through SCOM, but then after that I realized it's uh, actually conducted in Zoom. Um, for mental health, well-being and uh, working with students or young age group, I think uh, we need a lot of focus and a lot of energy on them. So I would suggest um, rather than spending it or conducting it in a very big group, rather have it in a very small group so that actually you can actually have a more focus on uh, every individual or students personally, you know, so you can actually kind of uh, understand what is their background, what is the mental stress they're going through. Yeah. Mm. Sounds like making uh, it more thank personal. You. Mm. Thank you, Lakesh. Maybe I'd just like to clarify a little bit on one of the points that you mentioned. So it is not that the program is no longer carrying out using the SCOM package, right? Um, you are looking at two different versions. I think just now Rebecca mentioned there are two versions of this program, the Bloom program. One version which they are currently taking, uh, which is currently ongoing now through Zoom, that is what we call the synchronous mode. Synchronous meaning that um, all the participants, they have to be present real time together with the instructor. All right? Asynchronous mode is what you have actually been evaluating. So we are rolling out the, the materials online so individuals at their own time, they can interact with the programs and we will provide um, the necessary support based on their inputs. So that is the asynchronous mode, just to clarify a little bit on the difference. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah, thanks, Akash. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, next, we move on uh, to IMH. Uh, you have any questions for the, the two programs that were under IMH? Uh, Josephine, Margaret, uh, Ben, feel free to chime in. Okay, Erin, um, would I be able to ask the question, how effective were these, uh, you know, uh, programs? Uh, how, how did the students' uh, uh, response to these programs which uh, I'm mm -hmm. uh, I mean, okay. before and after, was there any survey done before and after? Mm, yes. So perhaps uh, Wyman, yeah. you want to you want to speak about this? This is for yeah, sure. if Wyman was evaluating the the, the 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 webinar that included IMH management. Uh, so maybe yeah. Wyman, you can share a little on this. Yeah, sure. So um, thanks, Margaret, for the question. So um, the pre-event survey included the um, I think one of the gaps was that the post-event survey was not exactly the same as the pre-event survey. So in terms of the effectiveness of it, we could only base it off the feedback or the questions that were given on the post-event survey, um, which is why the, um, one of my suggestions was to have the exact same questions to see whether, so the pre-event survey was really detailed, included the GHQ general health questionnaire, um, general anxiety disorder, and the basic resilience um, survey. So that uh, um, kind of sets the benchmark and then whether or not your effective mode of the program comes in, then I think it makes sense to have the same three um, uh, surveys to be done rather than a generic question that was done. I think due to technical issues, they were not able to roll out the post event survey to have the same pre-event survey questions. Um, so in terms of the effectiveness, um, we were basing it off uh, quite general questions like whether or not they felt there was an impact, uh, did they gain the, so it was not as detailed um, versus the pre-event survey. 
Does that answer your question? Uh, so, so what was the effectiveness? Yeah. With, did, they, yeah. did they feel more comfortable uh, so, now knowing more about mental yeah. illnesses with patient people yeah. who have got mental Understand. illness? Would they be able to cope with, um, you know, if they had a colleague that yeah. had mental illness, you know, that sort of thing, or even themselves uh, having some issue with mental illness, uh, mental health issues, would they be able to cope with it? Would they know how to seek help and so on? But So, in general, the feedback was they responded positively to it. So, they felt that they gained knowledge on it, on the topic. They felt that was mm -hmm. important. Uh, but the general feedback was that they didn't get uh, detailed advice on how to go about doing it. So, like, knowing the importance is one and then knowing how to do it is different. So, the question of whether or not they can actually help a colleague, I don't think they can. Um, and then there was feedback on um, wanting more detailed um, steps on how to actually help. Uh, friends and colleagues. Um, in general, they felt that it was good, it was timely, um, it was the right time. They definitely need, felt that there was this need to have it. Um, but I think the overall um, take from the participants was that they only found that in, they increased the importance of, of knowing, um, identifying, I think knowing, identifying, but not really how to go about helping friends and colleagues or, you know, in. Um, which is what the feedback was if you were going to do future runs of the um, um, webinars to have a little bit more um, steps or you know um, to, on how about how about to help um, or to address these problems mm. so it would be more it would be more of a kind of a introduction or a kind of a flavor uh, of uh, mental health issues or or, or, or uh, wellness that they got to know the introduction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So uh, yeah, more introduction. How to identify? There were, uh, there's a big topic on how to identify mm -hmm. certain uh, signs. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, basically, yeah, you summed it up quite nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And maybe in the, uh, I mean, if my may suggest that we might want to think about you know uh, 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 promoting a kind of uh, instead of just an uh, introduction, we have a kind of a program that actually goes into a, a kind of stages, okay, a promotion, then a bit more understanding and, you know, level one, level two, and level three. We you need not go so much when they are in RP, but at least a little bit more, yeah? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Excellent suggestions. Yeah, I think that's something that, that we can consider. I think it was um, certainly given the amount of time that we had, uh, we could probably only manage to do that much. But I think, uh, yes, I think uh, what Waiman mentioned, it is true. Uh, some of the participants actually desired more information, more practical information on how they could go about helping friends. So that's something that we could probably look at um, doing in the long term. Uh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so this was for the um, webinar with IH Management. Uh, there was also another webinar which was on the uh, off center stage play. So I just like to ask uh, our friends from IMH whether are there any questions for uh, on this for Shakira? Maybe Josephine, you have anything you would like to ask about? Uh, maybe I, I go first. Um, sure. Just uh, be, before I ask, maybe I just want to highlight two points. Um, I think the presenter mentioned Singapore theater, which I'm hmm. not quite sure what that was. Yeah. Um, and as Let's well as the collaboration. Yeah, so, so got to get the facts right. Lah. So, and then the other point that she mentioned was collaboration with necessary stage. I think I want to correct that a little bit because it's not exactly a mm. collaboration with them, but rather the play is by them. But the collaboration is actually between the schools and the hospital itself. Lah. Mm. Oh. Okay, um, so maybe I would just proceed to, to ask the question about this uh, stage play. Um, so, uh, Shakira, do you know actually what, what is this play about and what was the key message that the play was attempting to bring across to the audience? Uh, so, for the stage play itself, right, it's actually uh, explaining about the youth that are having mental health issues. Like, they were, uh, the two individuals were actually insecure and they didn't want to mix with anyone and they didn't want to, uh, they prefer to be alone. And as well as uh, 
they don't really want to share their feelings to uh, anyone. So this uh, stage play performance uh, actually want to show the audience what are the kinds of behavior, what are the kinds of action that the most of the depression people look to, so that they will realize that people who do, who actually don't want to mix with people, they are actually mm -hmm. uh, having either depression or anxiety. So yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the the story is actually not about depression or anxiety, lah. Basically. Uh, okay. And then you mentioned about um, including unemployment as one of your suggestion. So, what, in your opinion, do you think you will actually gel into the current situation? Uh, so uh, for now, uh, especially uh, the COVID-19, right, because students uh, and adults, they are actually struggling to get a job. And as well as uh, most of them will get retrenchment from some of the companies that uh, they actually cannot pay up the salary. So they will just uh, resign the students or an adult. So uh, basically for the performance, they may include um the students to perform about uh, unemployment rates also and as well as how they how they can seek for help uh during the unemployment rates during this covid 19 okay i do have one question though um i was just wondering whether there was an assessment done when because this particular watch party was actually held on two platform uh, Facebook and Zoom. So was, was there an assessment on whether there's a loss of audience when they transit between the two platforms? Uh, Sorry, Josephine, you want me to respond to this question? Okay, so um, this one, no, because the, um, the, the, the number of persons who watched both, right, the total number was the same. So yeah, we did not see any observable loss. Okay, that's that's yeah, because I think this one Shakira may not have access to that data because it's in the Facebook uh, DHMP P Facebook page. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can't but Shakira it. has access to the pre and post survey. So Shakira, any comments on that? Yeah, so uh, basically the pre and post survey was uh, conducted after the the whole performance itself. So uh, the question was brought up like uh, whether the performance actually uh, uh, exaggerated or the performance uh, actually uh, affect the audiences in an offended way. But uh, I think overall the performance did not offend any audiences or any students in any other way because it was all smooth and there were no hiccups during their performance. Okay. okay, so so they are not affected lah. Basically, they were quite comfortable with it. Was was there also a survey done on whether the uh, uh, the audience feel that there was sufficient time for discussion after that? Uh yeah, because the whole performance was uh two hour and thirty two minutes. So uh afterwards uh the directors and all, and including all the uh the directors itself, they actually uh, conduct a Zoom session, uh, like a Zoom session for them to discuss uh, regarding on, all on the feedbacks regarding this stage play. Okay. I hey. think Ben has something to ask. Yeah, ben, ben, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, um, this is pertaining to the previous webinar, mm -hmm. alright, because um, Unfortunately, I didn't have the, uh, the opportunity to join the webinar because of the limited um, uh, seats or uh, placement for the webinar. The capacity, I mean, the capacity. Yeah, so uh, maybe in future, need to relook into the, the mode of uh, webinar, webinar mode or something like that, so that, that more uh, participants can uh, join in uh, instead of having a, you know, certain under certain mode there's a certain capacity of uh, audience that kind of thing yeah so yeah, it, yeah so that's just one feedback lah. 
Yeah. yeah. So so uh, Ben, just to let you know, yeah, we 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 understand that. So the um, for the previous webinar, the there was a max I think of two five six, even though it was supposed to be ten thousand. So what we did is that we sought approval for the next webinar to be broadcast through Facebook Live, so that there will be uh, so that this would circumvent those issues lah. So the next oh. webinar, which is the one that Shakira was talking about, um, we took into consideration all the all the issues that we faced in the first webinar, mm -hmm. and we moved to Zoom plus Facebook Live lah. So yeah, that, that's a more um, a, that certainly that's a better platform. Yes, yes, correct. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, okay. So, are there any other comments before we move to the the last event? Um, any comments from anyone in general about the the first three programs about about clarity, uh, clarity's bloom program as well as the two webinars. Um, any? I, I do want to add, like, in, if we would, I think a lot of questions on the effectiveness or whether uh, online session would be effective. I think the the I think content is key regardless of whether you're doing face-to-face -face or online or any form of physical interaction. The problem is when we um, conduct seminars or online webinars or you know, uh, stuff that is not interactive, um, content gets too broad and we don't, we don't want patients or, you know, or, or whoever is you know, listening it to be just a number. Um, and that's where kind of, you know, if everybody's just a digit and you know, I just want to get across you know, 100 people, 200 people, then of course your effectiveness will definitely drop. So we focus on content. Um, smaller groups like uh, what Lakesh mentioned, um, even with the um, um, the content of uh, the Bloom project, you know, being as 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 funneled as possible. I know that there will be limitations to just create one content for one individual. But I know if the if the, the group gets more narrowed, then of course the effectiveness kind of goes up, and then it kind of takes away all the other um, so-called um, problems that might come with an online platform. Um, yeah, that's kind of take on online, online um, interaction um, therapies. Uh, thank you very much, Waiman. Um, okay, so maybe uh, Ren and Robert, would you like to ask the last question to Ruth? Yeah. <coughs> ah, yes, Hi, Robert, uh, go ahead. Yeah, um, okay, what, when, when, when uh, I was a full-time lecturer at uh, RP, uh, obviously we, we, you know, we, we, we engaged in a lot of uh, uh, active aging programs for seniors and we, you know, we went through, uh, we, we, tried to, uh, had, we, tried to, we tried to have co collaborations with a lot of uh, companies, whether private or governmental, uh, so we, we, we always try to, you know, push our uh, active aging programs, but uh, so, uh, Ruth, I mean, in your opinion, uh, in your opinion, right? So, how how can we make this? Uh, by the way, I just want to know that uh, as time went on, you know, the uh, the program seems to uh, get a little less favor in the sense that uh, uh, you know it seems to be dying down as years go by, and uh, you know, obviously, uh, it was a, 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 a not a good trend. Okay, and. Um, um, so, in your opinion, how could we make this program a little more attractive to our senior citizens, okay, and in order to promote active aging? And uh, I also would like to know, uh, what do you think are the barriers that has led us to have this uh, declining or this relatively low level of participation among seniors? Uh, despite so much publicity by our government and various uh, agencies, I mean, we have got a lot of uh, you know, advertisements from governments about active aging and things, you know. Uh, and uh, so, yet we have, um, we see, you know, a declining trend here. And is there anything that we can do, uh, do you think, uh, Ruth? Right. So, Robert, I want to clarify your question about uh, what we can do regarding active aging. Are you referring to, like, uh, this trend of... Uh, uh, lower and lower participation over the years or are you specifically speaking about this kindred spirits challenge and the, the sign ups for it i guess i guess in, in a oh, sense this event. I'll, be, I'll be referring to the kindred series because uh, you know we we like to ramp up uh, participation as much as possible uh, but in general, we are seeing a general uh, decline but uh, what i'm saying is is there anything we can do uh, for the kindred series to, to ramp up uh, uh, participation and to, to try to get more participation, basically, yeah. 
Sure. So you see, to me, promoting active aging, aging is a process. It's more than just a particular event. Kindred Spirits Seniors category is a very good uh, event, but it has to be sustained. In terms of uh, increasing the participation rate among seniors, there are two areas that uh, I would like to speak about. First is the classification of age. In this event, we are talking about seniors being anyone who is 55 and above. I think the fitness level of someone at 55 is very different from someone at 70. In fact, in today's uh, uh, environment, 55 may not even be considered a senior because many people are taking much better care of their health and even in their late 50s to early 60s and so on, they can still be very fit. So probably we can classify this event uh, more, uh, more, more narrowly instead of broadly saying anyone who's age 55 and above. You see, if I am a 70 year old, I will not be, uh, uh, I will not take up this challenge because I know I'm pitting myself against someone who's 15 years younger. So this is one. The second, I think, is in terms of uh, fitness level and in terms of abilities. Uh, like, for example, the winner of the uh, seniors category is someone who holds many uh, 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 trophies, you know, in terms of uh, his sporting prowess, right? Uh, compare this with a normal man or woman in the street. Uh, obviously, their level of fitness will be very different particularly if we are also hoping to get uh, participation uh, from the uh, old folks home, from the nursing homes and so on. Anyone who requires uh, a stay in a nursing home cannot be very fit, right? So they are going to pit against uh, someone who is a, world, uh, a champion, you know, in many uh, uh, international sporting events. So I think uh, if I'm a nursing home resident, uh, I would also uh, have concerns about taking part. And probably another thing is uh, in terms of uh, maybe segregation of sexes, of gender, because a man at any age is likely to be physically fitter and more muscular and able to do more compared with a woman in the same age group. You know, so these are some of the areas that I think we can look at in terms of um, ensuring or, or, or encouraging a higher participation in uh, future events. But as I also say, uh, Active aging is not just a one-off event, it is a process of uh, continuous engagement. I'm, I'm not sure if I answer that question. Robert? Yeah, yes, uh, I, think, I think you've touched on some of the, uh, some, some, some obviously uh, key, key answers. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I, I would agree with you that, you know, um, some, somehow like having some, uh, age group differentiation, like for example, how they do it at, in the master's competition whereby they have got strict age group groupings, you know, 50 to 55, 55 to 60, 60. So that, that uh, I guess would give it a little more, uh, a little more of a fair, fair edge for, for, for all the competitors concerned. Yeah, yeah, I think you've answered some of the questions and uh, yeah. I, I'm good with the answer, I'm good with the answer, yes. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much. Um, just like to ask, open to the floor now. Uh, this is the last, very last thing that we're going to do here because we are about 18 minutes over time. So apologies to everyone. But I think there are some very good points brought up by everyone. I'd just like to um, open the question that Robert has asked to the floor to ask whether anyone, either students or any of the partners here, 
anyone has any inputs? Because this is something that we constantly face. Um, I think I was mentioning in the chat, when we ask our students, which group of individuals they like to volunteer with, then we place all the different groups, uh, youth, children, um, uh, persons with disabilities and so on, and seniors. Seniors always comes all the way last. It is the least popular. But I think Melanie mentioned that it is very important for us to perhaps pair up uh, volunteers with seniors in the community so that we can also inculcate um, habits to support them in their active aging process. So just wondering whether anyone has any inputs on how we could help to um, support this process in the community. Hey Aaron, I hope you don't mind, but I try to upload something that I often use in my professional development when we try to convince or change mindsets of, of you know, teachers who um, teach in a particular way and then they're now because of COVID, etc. There are new ways of teaching and I call it the six sources of influence. Many a time we try to just talk to seniors uh, or talk to someone whose mindset we want to change. Um, but this book is really excellent and it goes along the, the six sources of influence. So you try and connect with the person's values and beliefs. You role model what it would look like. Then you give them the skills because it's no use having the will to do something if you don't have the skill. Then there are four other sources of influence. You connect with a knowledgeable other. So that's where the buddy system comes in, someone who knows. And so that whenever you don't know a particular uh, how to do something, you got easy access to that person and, and, and gives you small uh, instances of success which motivate you to carry on. Then you surround the person with other people, like-minded people um, like them. So it's never done in isolation. I know in this time of COVID, it's tough, but we can also use virtual reality to have little, little network, network communities, buddy communities. And then you've got to make it worthwhile for the seniors. So the most important thing actually is the needs assessment, right? Finding out from them and connecting with their values. What is it that they value, that they believe in? Um, and this is what we've been using in our work to help guide us in, in developing and designing our programs. But I always feel buddies, knowledgeable other, access to someone who can tell you how to solve something immediately and not, and so that you don't get, you don't get down on yourself, you don't get uh, put off, you don't get demotivated. Um, just my thoughts. Uh, that's the that's yeah the, i've actually shared this up, up here lah. so yeah correct thanks thanks a lot for sharing this all, yeah yeah thanks for sharing this with us melanie um, okay so out of the six right you all you need is just four and you can actually change your mindset and then you you got to find out what you can change and what's not in within your control and what's within others thanks aaron for your thank you um anyone else has anything that you would like to input before we end off this session Maybe I just uh, bring out some points. Sure, uh, sure. Okay, it's, it's, it's in, I think, a few of the presentations. So, uh, the original uh, idea in all these events, actually, we want to promote the inclusiveness. So, inclusive environment. So, that's why when the competition is going on by right, we won't want to segregate by gender. And also, uh, our original target for the kids and the seniors we even actually wanted the, the grandparents to join in the kids, but uh, somehow uh, there's some limitation to it. And for the uh, suggestion by some of the presenters, maybe on uh, one, one, okay, maybe roof one, the suggestion by the presenters, uh, you had to check on the actual uh, prescription for sit and stand the uh, actual test prescription is already fixed at array around 43.5 cm to 45 cm chair height. So we go with uh, the 45 cm height so that the, they won't be too low and they fall and they, they when they so-called sit back too low, they will hit their spine. All right. So this is a prescription. It's not that we want to fix it at this height and it's not any uh, dining chair can actually uh, use it. Right. The other part will be the submission of the videos is actually all on via YouTube besides the TikTok dance, uh, then to email to us. What happens that uh, a few of the uh, participants didn't uh, actually notice the email, they just post directly in, onto the Facebook. Yeah, the rest should be quite okay. Yep. 
Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Um, if there are no further inputs, um, so I would like to uh, thank everyone for attending this session. So thank you to all the presenters. Thank you to all the partners. And uh, we look forward to working with our partners on um, events in the future. And we will certainly take into consideration all of the feedback that you have given. And we appreciate all of the feedback given. So thank you very much, everyone. And um, I wish you a very happy weekend. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. all the best. Take care. Thank you. See you all. Goodbye. Thanks, Thanks Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, I'll end the meeting.